<laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Lisa. I'm Brando. I'm Big Mike. And this is Brewheads. You damn right. And the Lord say Brewheads! And we are here at Armada. Yes. With the uh, captain of the Armada, Johnny. Johnny K. Thanks for coming on through. Hell yeah. Thanks for oh, having thank us. Thank you for having us. Of course. This has been a long time coming. I don't, like I'm surprised years. we never did this. Yeah. It's been like four years coming. Yeah. They waited for me. Maybe five. Oh, that's what it was? It yeah. Was, yeah, they waited that's, for you me. know what that's what it was. We needed the queen to, to be with yep. us. The queen bee. The queen of the north is now in the south. Mm-hmm. The queen of the north, queen of south. I'm just the queen. Yeah. yeah. Just I not agree. the savage queen. No, there is only I, one Savage Queen. Yeah, I cannot have that. Although, you know, I was talking about my tattoo that I got at the anniversary yes. party. Yes. Oh my goodness. Of course, I got the crown. What yeah. did I get that? I don't even know what I got tattooed that day. I can't remember the anniversary party. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I think I got. I think I got the little cupcake thing. Oh. Yeah. I think. Yeah. I yeah. think. Back to that. I didn't know there was a cupcake you could get. No, my daughter drew that. It's uh, Aww. it's like a character Carl from uh, Five Nights at Freddy's. Oh, okay. So she uh, was drawing up tattoos, and people were actually getting them. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. She actually tattooed. She actually got to use the gun and tattoo a portion of that too. No kidding. That's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. They're were pretty... there pictures of that? There's a whole video. Okay. Yeah. I feel like I remember seeing. I think we talked about a it like a couple days later, maybe yeah, yeah, something like that. But my mom was like, "Wait, you let her tattoo you?" I was like, "Yeah." It's like she it's drew it too. It's like, Memories. yeah, oh yeah. She still she talks supervised. about it. She was definitely supervised. Yep. She had her gloves on. Gloves she was on. very precise. But she's an artist, you know. So she just, she just was told what to do, and she's like, "Okay, I got this." Confidence. She is something. Make them hurt. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> had to cry a little bit. Cry a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Although, as much as I love talking about your daughter, will. Save that for a little bit later. Yeah. We have some beer things, very important things to talk about today. Let's hear, let's hear it. Let's beer it. I'm just here for the beer. <laughs> so actually, let's uh, talk about the beer that we Yeah, because this is a uh, Let's phenomenal. start off with this. Yeah. Yeah, this is uh, Raining Tacos. This is uh, a beer. Actually, my daughter came up with the, <laughs> the name of this one as well. Uh, it actually started from, uh, I picked her up one day from school, and uh, she was like, hey, uh, can you put on this song? Every time we get into the car, it's always like requesting a song or something. Yeah. She's very demanding. Uh, <laughs> but her Uber driver takes care of her. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, she, she was like, uh, can you play this song, Dad? It's called Raining Tacos. And it's like this children's song. And it's like kind of like um, uh, like almost like 16-bit or something like, like, like digital. Like starts yeah, off yeah, like yeah, a, yeah. that. And it has this dope beat. And it's like a, a squirrel is the label. And yeah, maybe you can put a little snippet in there. It's called It's Raining Tacos. And I was so pull I, it up and then I realized it's not probably going to sound like yeah. if I pull it up. I was like, man, that's a that's a dope. Like for one yeah, the song yeah, was dope. Yeah. I was like, I want to know the lyrics to this. Yeah. So I was I was listening to it and uh, I was like, dude, we should make a beer called It's Raining Tacos. I mean, it sounds pretty cool. Originally, I think the idea I was going to do like raining like R E I G H N I N G, you know, mm-hmm. raining. Yeah. And I was like, no, nah, we'll keep it raining and then uh, like raining falling from the sky because I think the song goes well and then Alex uh, was inspired to draw up a label so she put together a little something on Procreate yeah. put it together threw it together I think we, the label showed up like the day before like Cinco de Mayo oh, okay. we were like yeah. panicking we are like are the labels going to show up uh, but now it's like taken off it's become a pretty popular beer around here people love it uh, yeah. all year round uh, I think we might put it out it's like someone does a semi-permanent and we're probably gonna do a little bit of a brand uplift on it on it and uh make it a little bit more fun yeah yeah and uh like you said we tossed that one together in literally like three weeks we didn't have a name for our our mexican lager for single de mile at all and it literally all happened like mm-hmm. we re- we brewed it and it just said mexican lager <laughs> that was the first single de mayo here right yeah it was the first single de mayo here up and i was like yeah food truck was out there and i was like we need a we need a name for it and so Skylar picked her up. She literally just, it all happened from that one stem of idea. And uh, it's been great. It's going well. Uh, we're changing it up a little bit. Obviously, we do the lime in there. And mm-hmm. yeah. you can get it in the mugs. You can get it like your classic, uh, our side pours, um, which I think Mike did for that. Or you yep. get it in the yeah. tall glass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been drinking a lot from tall glass. I think it goes down. I just drink it quicker. So mm-hmm. I like it. Uh, simple beer, Pilsner, Vienna, some corn. And um, Hollertal Middle Fruit Hops. 
lager it. It takes about 28 days, start to finish. That's not bad. Yeah. It's super light. Super light. I it it, it it's Got five. Flavor, yeah, tons it's of flavor. Such flavor. Um, yeah, it's five and a half, like five point two percent. I think that's what it is, or maybe it's four point eight. I know it's supposed to just be like it's supposed to be a crusher. Yeah. And uh, it's been going well. We love it. It's like it's just my it's my go to. I think on draft it's better than the cans. And per- personally, there's something about like getting a draft cold pour of it. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I drink it at home too, and I'm like, man, I just I wish I just had a faucet right here. Yeah. 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 I mean, I know someone who uh, yeah. kegs it. I might be able to uh, hook you up. <laughs> yeah. Do you know it. someone like that? Maybe. Maybe. Huh. Maybe. Maybe. That'd be crazy. Yeah. Hey, and with your little fidgeting in ingenuity, I bet you can probably even come up with how to make it come out of your faucet. Regular faucet. Oh, Regular faucet. Uh, know what? Yeah. That would actually be freaking hysterical. Mm-hmm. We do have at our house like a water faucet. Yeah. That would be cool to actually turn that into a beer faucet. Oh. Yeah. I like that. I love that idea. <laughs> this is, in, I'm prepared for this to be cut out because it's a stupid idea, but it's hilarious in my head. A shower beer, but it has like the shower curtain and the beer is coming out from the shower head. Oh, wow. Secondary shower head that has beer coming out of it. Mm-hmm. I've seen people put faucets in their showers. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was a home brewer when I was out in Chicago. Kidding. Yep. He uh, came in one day. I was running the homebrew store at the time, and he came through. He's like, "Look what I just did!" Oh no, he was. Uh, he came in. He was looking for a shank. He's like, "I need like a six-inch shank." <laughs> yeah. And I was like, oh, "That's a pretty big shank." All right, yeah, we'll order you one. So we ordered him one, and then he came in a couple weeks later, and he's like, "Look what I did!" And he put it through his wall in his shower. Wow. Yeah, his wife gave him permission to uh, do that. Wow. So, my wife would never give me permission. Yeah. To do that. And I, said, I think that if I, I had fantastic. a man willing to do that for me, <laughs> they wouldn't need to ask permission. It would already be done uh-huh. for me. And I said, that was, that's a, I'm jealous. Yes. I want that. Yes. And uh, now that we own our house, when we get the, the, the uh, bathroom like, remodel in a couple of years, yeah. I'll somehow convince Alex maybe. Yeah. So, babe, just, uh, you know, throw a little beer faucet in there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, you know, throw a six inch shank in the budget. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's all about shank size. Oh, God, this is fantastic. Really good. Beer. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. So, I like it with the lime. I'm just yeah, going to say, because yeah. I've had it Actually, both so, ways, like the first yeah. year. You know what? Um, like, when I was in uh, San Antonio and I got all the Mexican loggers, pretty much no one even asked if I wanted a lime. They just do the lime in there. <laughs> one thing I will say about the lime is I see a lot of people, like, make the beer and they go ahead and they put the lime in the beer for the customer like in the fermenter and package yeah, with the lime. Yeah. I don't like that. I think it's just the lime is different. It's like really overwhelming where if you get like a nice freshly squeezed lime in there, it's like perfect. Right. It's just enough. It's like, I don't need you to, I, I don't need you to, you know, salt my food for me. I'll salt it. <laughs> you know, I don't need you to lime my beer for yeah, me. Yeah. I'll, I'll handle that. So there's a lot of, uh, a lot of breweries doing that, but. Yeah, I, I'm, so, I'm with you on that one. I prefer, just give me a lime wedge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Don't, don't, lime don't add the lime. Beer yeah. Or do it yourself. You know what? It, a lot of times, a lot of breweries, it gets too limey and almost with the lime and the salt, it almost turns into like a goza flavor. Yeah. And yeah. It's, and yeah. I don't know. I don't it does know. something. It, it's. Yeah. Or just back off on it, maybe a little bit. Oh, it doesn't taste like lime. No, it, uh, no this yeah. is the best way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fresh yeah. lime. Yeah. Give me a lime. Ice cold beer. Yeah, yeah. Yes. You can't beat that. Agreed. Do we want to talk about the beginning? Let's bring Johnny yeah, back to the beginning. Let's bring Johnny back yeah. to the beginning of oh, Chicago. Uh, How did we get here, <laughs> Johnny? Brewing. How did we get to Armada yeah. in Fairhaven, Connecticut? Yeah. So yeah, I'll I'll give you cliff notes. I'm sure you, you know, we'll sit, spare the the time. <laughs> yeah. So Four score and twelve yeah. years ago. Yep. So uh, twelve years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. That was. was good. 12 years ago, I was living in Chicago. I was an automotive tech, and uh, I picked up like a side job at a package store just to get some extra beer money. Like and uh, at the time, I had no clue what craft beer was. I think maybe I had like like a Magic Hat number nine at a couple yeah. parties at some time. And Magic Hat number nine was like the ale or the beer I would drink if I was like trying to be fancy at the time. Yeah. Yes. Same for us. Yeah. And so um, 
I was just, yeah, there working there, and uh, I was learning about craft beer, and I saw this shelf. I was like, man, what is all these like crazy beers? Like I've never even heard of them. So many different ones. Actually, one of the one of the first ones I ended up buying from the store I bought it was a uh, Brooklyn's like Black Ops, and it was like a freaking like Imperial Stout or something like this. I, I opened that thing open. Yeah. I was like, this is fucking disgusting because <laughs> I had no I had no acquired yeah. palate for this stuff at all. So. Uh, took that home and then I talked to my boss at the time. I was like, "Dude, what? Dude, th this beer was awful." He goes, "You're you're going in the wrong direction." He's like, "Try a couple of these, blah blah blah." And uh, anyhow, I started falling in love with craft beer. And um, there was this girl who worked, uh, got a job actually at the pack store as well. And she uh, she worked down the street at what was Half Acre at the time on Lincoln Avenue. Kate was her name. And she was like, yeah, I work over there. You should come on by sometime and check it out. And I didn't think much of it and uh, eventually went in there. I was like, oh, it's kind of cool. And, you know, just ask questions. How'd you get started? What not? And uh, they're like, oh, he was a home brewer. You know, it's a home brewing. And uh, at least the guy that was talking to him, I don't think he was talking about the owner, but yeah, it's a home brewer and uh, just started making beer at home. And I was like, oh, it's kind of cool. So looked into home brewing and uh, from there kind of like, took off. I was kind of obsessed. I was like, I'm making beer at home. Okay, I can do this. Got a job at the store that I was shopping at after begging them. I kept was like, hey, can I get a job here? Can I get a job here? And I just completely left the industry I was in. Yeah. Um, did a little side things to make some money as well. But anyways, fast forward. Uh, while I was there, I saw other breweries up and come from home brewer to like professional breweries. So okay. like I saw the beginning of Pipeworks, Ooh, Microphone, okay. 18th Street, Drew, like all those guys were coming yeah. into our stores as customers. And that's like, we were the local homebrew shop for that like Chicagoland area. Yeah. So it was kind of cool to see them. I mean, the, the guile, it, it, the, 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 the list is endless. And I got to meet a lot of cool people being like the only homebrew shop there. I got to meet like Randy Mosier, uh, Jeff Sparrow. I think his name is Jeff Sparrow. Um, uh, got to know the guys from... Uh, What's his name? Ray Daniels, who did uh, the Cicerone program. Mm -hmm. So I got to meet, like, these guys all lived in Chicago. So got to chat with them. They kind of also, like, boosted the idea in my head, like, yeah, dude, if you want to do it, go for it. Yeah. Um, but seeing other people do it that was in the homebrew position go and chase their dream was really what dr dr like drove me. Um, and so I wrote a business plan. And I pitched the idea to Alice. She's like, yeah, that sounds great. And originally we were going to open up in Chicago. And uh, ended up, uh, we were she was pregnant with Sk uh, Skylar. Uh, she got pregnant. Uh, or I got her pregnant, however you want to put that. <laughs> yeah. And so, like, the idea of, like, a brewery kind of, like, went in the back burner. It was yeah. like, you know, well, we're about to have a kid. Go to work, go to work, go to work. And then after about a year of, uh, you know, Alex being at home, I'm working, t getting the kid, uh, raising the kid, whatnot. I had said, I was like, yo, like, we need help. Like, like raising a kid by yourself is great, but like my parents haven't really seen Skylar. They yeah. flying all the way out here. Said, why don't we do this? Oh, sorry, I'm gonna back up. We came here for, we came to Connecticut for Christmas. And when it was here is when this all kind of stemmed together. Cause we toured around, there was like eight breweries at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like two roads. And at the time, uh, no offense to Phil, but the beer, sucked <laughs> you know when they had like the that and then like the well, beer I'm the sure coming from chicago and the names that you just mentioned yeah that you were well the beer here was rough yeah then yeah. you come here it's, yeah that's i, I will say connecticut state has state. taken a complete one eight like connecticut makes some top tier beer now but at the time 12 years ago we were in the the early baby stages and i was already seeing like mm -hmm. really good stuff yeah and so when i came here i go oh my god like the, the market out here, like totally, like we could kill it. Um, and also there was only, like I said, eight breweries at the time, um, maybe 10 yeah, yeah. if I'm lucky. Um, and then I, I said, you know, let's, let's, let's move back here. We get some help with the kid, you know, we can live my parents temporarily. We'll start up this business idea and we'll just go for it. Like, yeah. what do we have to lose? If, if it fails, we'll go back to Chicago. We'll try something different. And, um, she was cool with it. She was, I mean, at least she said she was. Yeah. <laughs> she's still here. Yeah, so yeah she's she still here. Cool yeah, she, uh, she, I get the guilt trip all the time. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, so we packed up our stuff. Literally, I want to say we were there um, December. We, we came up with the idea. 
I think, do we let it marinate? No, yeah. We December, we came for the holiday. I think we ended up moving out here in like March of 2016. Okay. Our lease was coming up to an end and we asked our landlord like, hey, can we, can we end it a couple months earlier? I think she was in the, like trying to sell it and whatnot. So packed up her stuff. I uh, flew Alex and Skylar on a plane and I decided to get a super mover, a U-Haul. Yeah. And um, Drive your seat. Hook, trailered up the car to the back of it, packed up our entire condo yeah. and all my other, my things I had, I had so much stuff. Uh, anyways, <laughs> just thinking about that, <laughs> thinking about the trip. And I had the dog and I had a cat in the, oh, in the truck with me. Wow. And, Oh my God, it's like definitely going through my head. And it's, yep. bringing me, it's bringing back some crazy memories in my head. I binged that entire trip. I think I, I pulled over for like maybe an hour to take a nap, um, but I, I fortunately did not bring any drugs to keep me awake. <laughs> uh, hour drive? I, yeah, it was a 14, it was actually ended up being like 28 hours. Jesus. Cause it was like, I literally hit every fucking traffic, traffic and oh. construction oh. zone in, in eternity. Yeah. I binge so many fucking podcasts. I listen. I think I like listened to an entire. I felt like an entire like a uh, encyclopedia of podcasts. <laughs> but eventually started getting bored of that. But yeah, like I said, unfortunately, did just if your brain. You just go into a different mode, and you just yeah. all right. I need to make it there, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I made the. I made it through the trip. Sorry to bore you about that, but it was crazy. No, Anyways, no, packed no. it up, came here, and uh, just uh, ended up. First, I was like, all right, let me get a job, something, so I can get some income, because I didn't want to burn through what we had already spent on the move and everything else. So I got a job. I believe I, I got a job at Stony Creek for a little bit. Went over there and um, was working with them. I and mean, I told them, too, like, you know, eventual goal is to start a brewery. A lot of people are like, yeah, 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 you know, yeah, especially yeah. all the employees that yeah, you work yeah, yeah. with. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, 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 whatever, kid. You and everybody else. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, all, yeah, right? yeah. We all want to start a brewery. Yep. And so... Um, I ended up leaving uh, Stony Creek. Um, I probably won't. I won't say it. <laughs> I won't say why. But uh, it was. It was. It is a funny story. If you talk to some people at Stony Creek, it is actually a very funny story. I just. Uh, no. 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 Cut that. Cut that. It's a very funny. It's a very funny story. It was actually a, a debate about science. <laughs> I'll just put it to that. Yes. <laughs> Anyways, uh, ended up leaving them, and uh, at the time, actually, when I left them. Uh, Alex and Skylar were in Bulgaria visiting oh, wow. uh, her parents okay. out there. Um, she had, they had not seen the grandkids, so we was like, you know what? Yeah. Let's take the summer off. We just moved here. You guys go out to Bulgaria. I'll work. Figure it out. Mm -hmm. So I quit this job while they were out there. Uh -uh. And, and basically, uh, Alex was like, well, what the fuck are you doing? I was like, well, I'll, I'll get something else, but part time. But I really want to focus on this beer thing. Yeah, yeah. And uh, she was like, okay, yeah. I'm halfway across the country yeah, to break yeah, that news yeah, to not me. Too much I can say. So, um, at the time, I just I kept looking around for properties. I was trying to go to the banks to get money. I already incorporated the business and I had the business plan. And I read, I feel like I read every book under the sun of like how to start a business, how to try and raise money. I just really struggled to find that like grasp of money yeah. at first. I can, um, I had just moved in here and I was able to get um, a family friend to, you know, give us like 10K and another family friend to give us, it's so we sort of like 20K. Yeah. Um, and then I just took out some credit cards. And so I was looking around, I was like, all right, what can I, how can I leverage my 20K? and my my credit cards yeah. to like start a brewery yeah. and you know every business plan we wrote was like you need a million dollars and a million dollars yeah. like <laughs> i was like all right i need to figure out another way to do this yeah. and um so i was going around a brewery to brewery brewery and i was just exploring and i came across overshores and he had like eleven thousand square feet and i kid you not at the time two thousand of it was used wow. like it was just an empty warehouse yeah. And I, I go in there, and he was actually – the day I walked in there, and it, mind you, I get it now, his perspective, because, <laughs> you know, when you're trying to brew, like solicitors come in all the time trying yeah, to sell yeah, you yeah, shit yeah, and whatnot. Yeah. So I introduced myself, and he was a one-man crew, and he was like – he was bottling or something like that. And I was – put a bug in his ear. I was like, hey, you know, I'm Johnny, trying to start a brewery. Um, I have this idea. I have a bunch of recipes. Um, you know, if you're ever, if you ever need any help here, I, I can help volunteer. I'm, you know, uh, I'm looking for a space myself. Um, 
but if you need help, I'll help you out. It looks like you, you know, you're a one man crew right now. And he was like, yeah, 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 yeah. So I kept showing up. I showed up another time and he was there with Bruin. I was like, you know, now that I'm thinking about it, like you have all this square footage. Would you be open to the idea of me coming in here? Like I'll burn a brew my own beer. I'll package it all. And then I'm going to go sell it. I don't have to go through all the licensing. You just create a sub brand. It's a, like a gypsy brewery. And at the time, I don't think he had any like a knowledge of what that was, uh, like a gypsy brewer or whatnot. And he was a little skeptical. And uh, so I said to him, I said, you know, hey, like I kept, bu I literally kept, I was showing up to help him out, but I kept bothering him about it. And uh, finally, he um, he gave me like the okay, and I was like, yeah, like I can, I can, I can. Yeah, yeah. He's like, yeah, just go for it. I was like, I'll buy it. I told him, I was like, I'll buy a fermenter. I'll do everything. Cause he had 45 barrel fermenters oh. and like he had, he had a 15 barrel brew house, but two 45 barrel fermenters. Yeah. I was like, bro, like I have no clue how to operate on that. I was like, I gotta get my own fermenter. Yeah. So I, I was like, I'll buy my own fermenter. I'll hook it into the glycol. I know how to do all that shit. Blah, blah, blah. I was like, all right. So I literally went home that night and I got a bunch of quotes. Well, I'd gotten a bunch of quotes and then I just ordered the cheapest one I can get. Yeah. Told him, I was like, Hey, we're having a fermenter show up. It's an estimated date, like, you know, a week. He's like, oh, all right, wow, okay. <laughs> so Fermenter shows up, we unroll it, and Bill Steiny, actually, I had, because Bill Steiny, I was in a Brew Haven Brew Club, and I was telling them, too, I was like, I want to start a brewery, blah, blah, blah. So I was over there, and I hit up Bill. I was like, dude, do you, you want to come on by, like, help me unload this, like, tank? I don't even know the dude. I just, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm at the home but he's, he's in my cool dude. So he's like, yeah, I'll come on by. And so he, um, uh, helped me unload it, me, him, and Christian, and we stood it up that day and we put it in the place. Yeah. And uh, then I went went to Home Depot, bought a bunch of PVC pipe, and I told him I was like, "Hey, I'm gonna turn off your glycol. I'm gonna cut into it." And he was like, panicked. He was like, "What?" I was like, "Yeah, I got it." I was like, "Yeah, I got it." He was like, "You sure?" Oh yeah. He's like, he's like, he, oh, yeah. Man. But nothing was in the fermenters. Yeah, I don't think he had really much to worry about. I was like, I got you. So. He was running the bar that night, and I think that's when I met like Paul and Tracy and a bunch of like our reg you know regulars that we see all the time now. But they're like, dude, this kid showed up to my door and he's fucking like, relentless. Yeah, he <laughs> cut into my brew house, you know, system. So I got it up and going. I ended up. Uh, I was also, do you know, Bare Hands Brewing? No, Bare Hands no, Brewing no, no, no. out in um, Putnam. Yes. Jason, or not just Justin and Kayla. Wow. He's gonna kill me for saying that. So he was also somebody I met in the the, the industry because we were doing like tastings, uh, homebrew tastings, homebrew events, um, uh, all over the state. So we were running into each other all the time. We got to know. Her. I said, "Hey, dude, I'm brewing on this day. Do you want to come on by and we'll make some beer together?" And this is like I want to say it was the middle of the winter. And mind you, I didn't know how far Putnam was, Correct. but this motherfucker drove th like three hours. I don't know what it was. Like total. <laughs> To like come hang out and do the brew day with us. And Kayla also came down too with their baby at the time. Oh, wow. Yeah, so they yeah. They had a was she a baby? I remember I feel like she had a stroll or she had a carrier. Yeah. Something yeah. like that. I think it was their 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 son, Aiden. Um anyways. Came on down that day and we we made the beer. It was the first beer, Curse King. And uh I didn't know what I was doing. I mean, <laughs> I'll tell you that. I mean, I knew how I knew what I, I knew what I was. I knew how to make beer. So I, at this time, I had already volunteered. I while I was in Chicago, I didn't just manage this home store. I was going to other breweries. I was volunteering. I was doing everything. But I had a mechanical mind. I could figure everything out. But I, one of the things I did do at all these breweries, I asked so many fucking questions. Yeah. I did not stop asking questions. I was very annoying, probably. <laughs> but um, uh, we made the beer. I never brewed on this brew house, but I was able to figure it out. It's a pretty simple process. It's just a bigger homebrew setup. Um, got it going, knocked it out into the, the fermenter, high five each other, and we're like, all right, we got this shit. You know, let's, yeah. let's go. Here we go. And uh, the glycol didn't work. <laughs> oh. The glycol worked, but it wasn't working correctly. correctly. And so I thought I had fucked something up. No, the glycol just had some the, 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 the thing had some issues. Yep. So like when I told him, I was like, "Hey, dude, my beer is like, like fucking seventy something degrees, yeah, yeah. seventy two degrees. Like, what's going on?" He ended up fixing it. Uh, and, and funny enough, I was so fucking panicked because like literally, I just spent I twenty k. Right. I just spent the money on a fermenter, yeah. which is you know ten. Yeah. yeah. Spent three three thousand dollars on ingredients. Yeah. I ordered bottles. 
I had no more money left. Yeah. I basically had like zero fucking dollars. Right. I had my credit card, right. but yeah. I had no more money. I had no more money. So I had spent all this money, and I'm like, man, that's our first batch of beer. What the fuck am I gonna do? So I had set up a, um, I had downloaded an app on an iPad or like an extra iPhone we had, mm-hmm. and I literally set it up and I taped it to the back of the fermenter, and it was a, um, a baby cam on the glycol. So if I could see if the temperature was getting too high or too low, like I would go back, reset the glycol system and do it. And I kid you not, I probably drove out crazy during this, but I had gone back like that night two times just because I didn't trust anything. I was like, dude, the glycol didn't turn off. I was fucking panicked. And this is, this is day two. This is like, so the first day it happened, obviously temperature had spiked. It only went up to like 72, but I'd set it to like 66. So I'd gone back a bunch of times. Long story short. The first beer gets done, and now I'm like, oh, it's time to package. And it's, it's 15 barrels of beer. Yeah. It sounds, it sounds, 15 sounds like a small number, but when you break it down into cans and kegs, right. it's, it's a lot of a lot. fucking lot. beer. 15 barrels, 30, what is it, 33 gallons a barrel? 31 gallons per barrel. Yep. And so you end up, you know, there's a lot of cases in that. I order online, like, these bottle fillers. So I order, like, these bottle fillers, and I literally, out of wood, made a bottle filler. Like I, and like with, oh, yeah. Wow. So I bought like the bottle fillers or counter pressure bottle fillers. And I, I freaking like strapped them with like electrical conduit straps to the piece of wood. And we, we made our bottle filler. Yeah. So I gone online. I said, Hey, um, we're a new brewery in town. Uh, we're over at Overshores. I'm packaging our first beer tomorrow. What are we going to, you know, yeah. uh, I need help. I can need some volunteers. I'll give you beer. I'll pay. I'll eat. I'll, I'll feed you guys. Yeah. Just come hang out. You can drink. We'll have a good time. And that's when the credit card gets used. <laughs> <sighs> I think I still had some cash. <laughs> so I'm jealous. Uh, I've never heard of this. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> so I hit them. Uh, I, I hit up all these people. Yeah. And I just actually I threw it out to the world. I didn't know who's going to show up. Yeah. And my aunt, who has always been, you know, very supportive of my journey. She's been there at homebrew events and whatnot. She just, obviously she showed up. And then people just start trickling it. Yeah. You know, oh, I you know, I know so and so. I saw your post. Yeah. And they trickled in. And by the time you knew it, I think there was like 15 to 20 of us. And I was like, I don't have enough tasks for all these fucking people. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I was going to get like two helpers, yeah. maybe three. But I had like a whole squad of people to help out. And uh, I will say there's been like lifelong friendships that I've made from that, that moment, uh, those days. But. Um, all these people show up. We bottle the first the f- first batch of Curse King, and it was, you know, off to the races. Um, it was a hell of a day. It was probably the, the most lib- laborious day <laughs> ever in the history of Armada, those days. But we all came together. We had a great time, and I can't thank those everyone that was there enough. Yeah. Every now and then from time to time, I see, you know, they come on through here, and there's some of them that are, you know, f- uh, we're employees. Uh, Mikey was an employee. Ray uh, is uh, part time here, and he comes helps out from time yeah. to time. Um, so yeah, it was like what, that memory in my head is so vivid of that those bottling days. Um, so we had the first beer, a package, and now I'm like, all right, now I got to figure out how to sell it. I didn't have uh, the one thing I didn't do while I worked at all these breweries or volunteered is I never dealt with the sales and distribution side of it. Yeah. So I had to like learn that. So I literally, uh, during the day now, th- this was uh, uh, December of 2016. We had ba- packaged a beer. Uh, no, we, had a, we had our planned launch. Actually, we did have a launching party. So uh, a launching party was at the Beer Collective on January 20th, 2017. Okay. All right. So. My first thing is I had gotten contact. I had – can't remember how it was, but the Beer Collective, somehow we met up, and I told them, hey, I'm launching my brand. I'd like to do my launch party with you guys. And they were like, yeah, that sounds great. So I yeah. sold them a bunch of kegs. I already pre-sold them the beer before the beer was even made. <laughs> so I had to scramble and put together a bunch of other things for this as well. Anyhow, um, and they were like, yeah, sounds great. Anyways, fast forward. We had the launch party, and now I have – I've only sold these five kegs yeah. or whatever it was to these companies. And that night, we sold out of almost every single beer. I think we, we, we kicked every keg yeah. that we had for that event. And um, now I had all these cases and kegs I needed to go sell to package and liquor stores. Yep. But I didn't, I didn't know how to do that. So 
Uh, during the day, Alex was working, and I was watching Skylar. Yeah. So I took the car seat, I put her in the middle of the car, and on the sides of her, I stacked up <laughs> cases of beer. And, then, and so when I would put her in, I would put her through, I'd go through my door, yeah. I'd reach over the center console, and I'd put her into her car seat, because yeah. there's <laughs> cases of beer on the side. And um, I put through kegs in the back, yeah. and we just drove around. Just drove around. Oh, that's a package store. Let's go inside. You know, and um, the first place to bite was uh, ne- uh, New England uh, Beverage Company in uh, Orange. It was Mario, first uh, package store customer. Yeah. Um, and then I used, well, Skyler, he says, he says to this day, if, if he's listened to this, um, but he says to, to this day, when I run into him, he's like, I only bought that beer because you came in with your daughter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He had no faith, yeah. no faith at all. And also we gave him terms. So <laughs> I had 30 days to go collect. Yeah. Um, that was the one thing I also was unaware of is terms. And I had to learn what like, like some places I, I knew of was COD. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. give them the beer, you give you the money, right. it's done. Um, here, our self for self distribution, there's there's uh, there's terms, and that yeah. that that was a big one. That's learn. where the credit card came in for the second batch, because yeah. 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 I had no money. Though I was selling this beer, I had to wait for those checks. Yeah, then yeah, I had yeah. to go fucking collect the checks because oh, we sent it, we sent it. No, mm-hmm. you didn't. Fuck. No, yeah, they didn't send. Right. It. Yeah, um, but I took care of obviously the the, the first main accounts. Um, got into like places that I I I knew people at mm-hmm. restaurants, and we sold we sold through our first batch of beer. And then it came time, now that, that money was coming back, we made our second batch of beer, which was a Fortune Raider double IPA. Went out with that. That was our first beer. Yeah. Fortune Raider was our... Was that, it Fortune Raider? Yeah, was for, it? No, it was Fortune Raider, because I brought the Fortune Raider... The bottle? Uh, no, the cans. Um, can. Oh, so yeah, so you got us because, in 2018 then, yeah, sometime. Yeah, because uh, we were doing... That's when we were doing the beer reviews, and that was the first beer that we got, because I got that from um, Harvest. Harvest. Yep. Yeah. So... Yeah, Fortune Raider comes around. Uh, we make that one. I do the same as I think. Hey, I need help on the packaging line. Blah blah blah. blah. And uh, that's when I ended up meeting Mikey, uh, Mike D. He now is over at Alvarium. He's uh, yeah. the head um, brew guy over there. I don't know his official role. Brewer, brewer, brewer operations <laughs> yeah, manager. <big> term. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So Mike uh, came in. He was from film industry. No experience in beer, but he was just looking for, you know, he's like, I got some time to kill, blah, blah, blah. Like, um, if you ever need any help, let me know. Yeah. So, yeah, man, I need help sa- doing sales. Um, if you can help me out, like, I'll go out, I'll sell, or just, you know, drop off and do some sales as well. Yeah. So, I'm both now me and him are on the road doing sales. And mind you, like, I think I just paid him commission. I was like, for every case, you get like 10 bucks. For every yeah, this, yeah. you get that. I was like, I don't know. Like, I don't have money, but this is what it's going to do. So he did that for some time for us, and the thing was like it, it it's a rough sales is a rough fucking yeah. job, yeah. Yeah, you same. know, especially if you're only representing one brand, yeah. right? Yeah, like yeah. you're representing one brand, and you got to get people to buy. And we were selling bombers at the time, oh, like bomb, like the twenty two ounce yeah, bombers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's a hard sell, dude. Really they're actually seven fifties, but yeah. yes, hard it's sell. like oh hard sell, yeah. dude. So plus you're not going in with a catalog of beers; you're going in with. Literally two beers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Curse King and, and Fortune Raider. That's all yeah. we had at the time. So he ends up picking up a job at Home Depot. And and I want to say, yeah, he ended up getting a job at Home Depot. And um, at the time, I think Christian saw, like, you know, this idea of, uh, you know, us being in there worked. And uh, he was in a he was in a financial hardship with uh, the Overshores building and whatnot. And um, uh, this is when the the beer twelve percent beer project was up, like oh, yeah, trying yeah, to yeah. find a space to like go into. Yeah. So they reached out to Christian, like, "Hey, I have this idea. Like, I see, you know, you're doing some brewing over there. I have this idea. We have all this catalog of, of brewer, gypsy brewers, and we're trying to start something small, um, more boutique-ish, blah blah blah." blah. Yeah. And so. They got together and they convinced them, like, uh, you know, that, like, that's something they wanted to get done. Yeah. So he ended up doing that. 12% came in, and that's when we got introduced to, like, canning. And we're like, oh, wow, this is, this is real yeah. packaging. Because, mind you, 
at the time, all the breweries out in Chicago that I worked with, they were all bomber bottles. Everyone was doing bombers. Oh, right. So I had never, I never, I had never seen a canning operation other than Stony Creek yeah, when yeah, I was yeah. working there. I never seen like a small size canning yeah, sc- yeah, scale. Yeah, yeah. Um, and granted, Stony Creek's canner was small, um, rel- relatively small. It's like a, like a three head filler. I can't remember what it is yeah, or four head yeah. filler. Um, relatively speaking, I've never seen like an operation come in, can the beer for you, and just you have it done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was yeah. like, how much does that fucking cost? Yeah. You know, because I'll, I'll, I'll join in on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, at the time, 12% was very, the, they, were, they were hesitant of us joining in on the canning runs. They were like, they just want to focus on their run. I was like, yeah. I'll pay for our portion of it. They had no interest. So I ended up buying, I said, well, I see how that canning line runs. Why don't I just buy myself a seamer? And then we'll just can our own beer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I bought two Blickman beer guns, and we literally canned our own beer with Blickman beer guns in an October <laughs> seamer. Damn. Wow. So we, That's we a long yep. Day. Fucking tell me about it, bro. <laughs> so we got it. We we did it. The first fifty. The first. It's, that was white. Uh, that was the uh, the White Storm Pale Ale, and then we did Death of Corruption, and maybe I, I can't remember a, a couple other beers. By this time, by the way, I should back up a little bit. In June 2017. Um, we also uh, applied for these, uh, the Brewbound um, Startup Brewery Challenge. The check is still right there. That Startup Brewery Challenge right there. Oh, okay. eight, yep, eight. And so, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. So it was that. June 15, 2017. All right. So, mind you, I had no money. Yeah. So uh, this is like a couple months in. I, we had already had uh, four beers. Mm-hmm. We had Curse King, Fortune Raider, White Storm, and Death of Corruption. So we had a black IPA, an IPA, a pale ale, yeah. and a double IPA. And you know, black IPAs in 2017? 2017. Wow. Yeah. And so I went into this thing and um, I saw it, I saw it online and I had reached out. I think I showed it to a friend or a friend showed it to me. He's like, dude, you should go, it's like the, you should go check this out. It's like a he showed me that. Yeah. I think that's what it is. I think he showed it to me. I was like, ah, I was like, I don't I don't have the money, man. Like I don't, I can't afford to go to that. Like yeah. Starting up the business, it's I think it was like f- a couple hundred bucks to attend. Yeah. He was like, "What if I pay for you? Will you go do it?" Oh. And I said, "Well, in that case, <laughs> yeah." I was like, "But like, wh- like what?" Do-? He's like, "He's like, you don't you don't owe me anything." Wow. Damn. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, well, "Thank you, dude." Yeah. So he paid for me to enter that that competition. Cause yeah, I think it was like five hundred dollars to enter. Cause I get, that included like your past the seminar and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, so he paid for that. I go down to New York. I take the train. I remember Alex dropped me off at the train station. I'm gonna cry probably telling the story. Damn. So. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, take the train down the other day, and I had practiced and practiced and practiced the speech. Yeah. Like. For the past like three days downstairs, yeah. I had my whole story. I knew what I wanted to do. I knew the whole like idea of Armada and the brand identity, and how I wanted to make a, a beer brand that just wasn't called like you know Armada IPA. One, I wanted to yeah. tell like a story within the brand. Yeah. And so, I tried to convey it into like a freaking two minute speech, but I was I think I did a pretty good job. Um, got it across and. Uh, was down there. I remember walking down the the you know where that big military ship is down in New York yeah, yeah, on the Hudson yeah, River right there. Yeah. It's somewhere over in that area. I can't yeah. remember what the, the town was, but I was walking up and down that strip, and I was like, I don't have stage fright, but that day, dude, everything tasted bland. Like I could, like my stomach was in a fucking knot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, dude, I'm I, I've never done something like this. So I practiced up and down, walked up and down the, the street. And people probably thought I was fucking crazy. <laughs> like you're, you're this. In New York. Yeah. 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 Another day in New York. Yeah. So I'm sitting there. I'm walking up and down the street. I'm fucking yeah. practicing. I go in, dude. My opportunity to, to uh, they call my name to go up. And mind you, the whole entire seminar was going on. This is something towards the end, like yeah. like almost the second half of the day. So I thought it was. I didn't know when it was going to happen. I was fucking a wreck. I walked on stage and everything just fucking disappeared. Blank. No, no, like all that fear just oh, okay. disappeared oh, and like okay. just yeah. the passion yeah. took over. 
And actually, I'm probably gonna watch that speech tonight because I haven't I haven't seen it in a while. But I, w- I went up there and I just fucking you fucking nailed it. Just fucking Crap. everything, every yep. fucking line of how it was. Boom. And then they question you afterwards, ask you questions, and that was a little. Uh, I was able to answer very confidently about things, and they were very like. There was one guy who was very very like harsh on me the about a lot. The 750 bottles yes. and you know whatnot, and I said this is well this is the idea i want it to be a communal thing you share the beers together and whatnot and so i get off stage i'm like holy shit you know the like the relief goes through you and uh then they they do the award ceremony and uh i don't remember it much the award ceremony but i just remember fucking my name being called i was like holy fucking shit and then we go to an after party and I'm carrying this fucking massive check. <laughs> like happy fucking Gilmore. <laughs> I'm carrying this fucking massive check. And uh, obviously it was a talking piece. But I was like, holy shit. Holy shit. And I had texted my wife at the time. Texted my buddy Tom who paid for the thing. I was like, I fucking won, guys. And then... uh Partied up a little bit, and then I remember getting home that day, took the check on the train, fell asleep with it next to me. <laughs> fell asleep with it next to me, and uh, yeah, and then that like boosted us to help us afford, like that helped get the can, the, the can seamer and yeah. all that other stuff. So like I was able to use that and expand and pay for another batch of beer because I was still on terms. <laughs> and man, mind you, man, people are fucking rough. They don't pay. Like the liquor industry is. Yeah rough in Connecticut and so many people don't pay and I didn't learn I didn't know all the things about like having to report people if they're they're, they're past due so like, yeah all this it was a fucking learning lesson anyways fast forward uh, we, we were canning on our own uh, t- like I said 12% was a little they didn't want us to like dip into their candy session they were prioritizing and like just getting their stuff done so we did everything by hand and that was fine and then eventually uh, the 12% relationship didn't like work out for whatever reason, but I was also able to tag onto the canning runs afterwards at some point, um, uh, and they would just bill us separately. So yeah. we were, I was able to speak up and say, hey, well, you're here, can you guys also do our thing? And I'm like, yeah, not a problem. So I had to schedule that rather than 12% schedule yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, 12% thing didn't work out. We continued doing it. We were hiring uh, 12% to come on through. Uh, but when they left, we had also been in discussions with some other people to start up their brands. So uh, I can't remember. I know like Erector was one. I had convinced Hoax to start, um, and a few other. Uh, I, I can't remember Nighthawk. I think was oh, there at the was time. The yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot about and so we were all making our beer, and we would hire Ironheart come on through. Hey, can this beer for us? And we were still self-distributing, and so things were going. Things were taking off. They were going good, and then. Um, Eventually, we got our own uh, 2018. Uh, so we had done a year of Ironheart canning, and we we're like, "Dude, this like we're making all this contract beer. This sounds like like we're paying all this money to Ironheart." Yeah. I was like, "I could take that money and I can make that as a loan payment every month." Yeah. yeah. So I was like, "Let me go to the bank and try and get a loan for a canning line." So they gave us a loan for the canning line. We got our own canning line. Um, so now I'm canning all the beer for the customers. That the barracks or the barracks yeah. that they were paying Ironheart to do. Now I'm getting that revenue, yeah. so I was getting revenue from that plus the distribution, and so that revenue kind of helped like fuel a lot of the projects within Armada um, and our, our growth. And then from there, we um, just kept going, 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 and we were self-distributing. I eventually bought a truck because we were using our I was using our Super Cross Trek at the time. We <laughs> all were using our pers- we we're all using our personal yeah. cars, so I beat the shit out of that thing. <laughs> Uh, eventually bought a truck and then hired a driver, you know, hired a driver yeah. and things were growing. Um, then, but also things were starting to get a little like, we were now at a point where like some people just weren't paying us at like, we had so much money in receivables. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about like 40 K a month mm-hmm. in receivables. Yeah. Yeah. And we were getting maybe like a small portion of that back. Yeah. This was, a, this were like, now that I think about it, these were the days, like when we were making that much money and freaking like self distribution a month, it, it it was it was adding up. But yeah, these people who wouldn't fucking pay you, and then people would buy beer, 
And they would go out of business a couple weeks later. I'm telling you, like, hey, dude, um, come on through. Like, we need some beer. Oh, yeah. You don't know. They're an established business. You go in, you sell them a couple kegs of beer. Then one month passes. Call, like, go there. Where, where are they going? Yeah. Oh, they just need a beer to get them through their last month of the rent. And, you know, the, the, the shit that people would pull on you is insane. It's fucking awful. As, as it's a parts manager that has to deal with like, wholesale body shops. I yeah. I feel that pain so Dude. Much. It sucks. It is rough. Yeah. So, the only thing I can compare to is a paper route when I was like 12 years old Christ. and the fuckers wouldn't pay. But that's oh, other than that, I have, I have yeah. no experience with it. No, but I, I, as a 12 year old kid trying to buy, you know, you know the Beer? next, the, no, the next entertainment system, <laughs> I guess I can feel your pain. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, we're like, we're starting to get to a point now where the cash flow is not coming through. So I was like, well, we're growing, yeah. and we're growing, but like the, the management of all these receivables is so difficult. So I was like, we should start exploring like getting a distributor yeah. because we just should focus on making beer mm -hmm. and that's it. So we got a distributor, got Serene. Uh, we signed with them in 2019. Things were going great. Yeah. And, but the biggest, biggest problem though was like transitioning all of our personal customers over to so, them yeah, yeah. especially right. all the draft lines and whatnot yeah. and now they had different minimum orders while we were just a keg they were like they need four cases yeah. blah, blah, blah. so yeah. there was a lot of that stuff going on and then we uh go ahead and uh uh 2019 it was going 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 seems like we're gonna have a great year we're planning for 2020 planning for 2021 boom fucking pandemic hits yeah, yeah, yeah. in March. I don't think much of it. I'm like, yeah. You know, I remember the day. I remember in my head, I can replay the almost the entire day back because I'm like sitting there and we're all talking and we're talking like, dude, this is some really weird shit going on. Like, oh, this school's getting pulled out yeah, right now. Yeah. This school's getting pulled yeah, out. Yeah. And then I get the call from my daughter's school. They're, they're getting pulled out. And um, yeah, pandemic happens. Actually, when this is all going on that day, some guy came in because we had to shut down the bar. I don't know if it was day of or the day after, but I remember he fucking came in and played the piano. Oh, and he fucking just, he just came to the barracks and played the, he's like, I'm just going to come here and play the piano. And we fucking just sang songs. No like it was like kind of like the end of the world yeah, type yeah, of yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, it wow. was, it was fucking wild. Um, so he, uh, that happens. And uh, obviously we had to adapt. We had to adapt. Now, we had all this beer in kegs, mm -hmm. planned for a distro, you know, to, to go out in a distro, and we had cases. But all we lost all of our draft overnight. That was yeah. like, that was 40% of our business. Wow. We had all this beer. Yeah. And, you know, one week passes, two weeks passes, three weeks passes. You're like, what the fuck? Yeah. Now my beer's starting, you know, it's still good, but it's like, it's when am I going what, yeah. what, what to get it? Yeah, right. And so, you know, all these restaurants are like, hey, can you come and grab your kegs and blah, blah, blah. And we're like, Whew. now we're definitely not getting fucking money on yeah, this yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, so, well, luckily, our, our distributors also took care of a lot of that because, but all the draft, like, we had nothing to do with it. So yeah. we ended up having to dump a lot of draft beer, a lot of money down the drain. Made it through that. Um, and then things you know, started to, to, to turn back around. Oh, what's they say? What really happened is during that time, we had a lot of time with the family. Had a lot of time to like really just sit back and not like be like so bussy, like bussing, bussing, bussing yeah, on the yeah, business yeah, all yeah. the time. Like I was able to sit down again and actually like say, all right, when the world comes back, because we started seeing signs of things improving, yeah. um, like we should really get our own tap room because while we were able to sell beer to go at the brewery yeah. that really helped us get through at the barracks but we were not getting obviously all the full cut of that yeah you know there was a large percentage of that revenue that also went to the the barracks um because he was technically he had the license so he gets his we would sell it to him as the wholesaler yeah. Yeah. and he would yeah, yeah, collect yeah. the retail on it so we were still making we were making some 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 money but it wasn't a lot and the community was very supportive of craft breweries during this time. Yeah. And yeah. so, like, I was like, man, we really need our own spot. Like, yeah. we could be, we could be benefiting from that. This, uh, but obviously, you know, it's not going to happen overnight. This is something that's going to take some time. 
Uh, so we really need to figure out like a, a thing. So I was driving around and mind you, this entire time that we've been open, we've been open three years now. We had a three year party in January of 2020. Yeah. Um, and, uh, We'd always been looking for spaces all throughout New Haven, all throughout everywhere. We Anybody who would say, hey, I got a spot for you, I would take the meeting. I took every freaking meeting. And then I was driving up and down a River Street in 2020 or 20, yeah, 2020, 2021. That's what it was because we already made it. We were back. Started Things were starting to turn around about this point. And uh, drove down here. And I, I, I'd always driven down River Street many, many, many times. And I always said, man. It'd be really cool if someone did something with these buildings one day. Yeah. I always wanted a brick building. I wanted two floors. There was a lot of things I wanted. And mind you, at the time, there was a lot more buildings on the street. Uh, mm. There was more. They all, all, A lot of them got knocked down. Yeah. But there used to be brick buildings the whole way up here. I was like, man, it'd be so freaking cool if someone did something. And uh, I'm driving to one day in January 2021, or maybe March 2021, and uh, I see a sign on the door. I'm like, oh. Cool, let's go check it out. Yeah. So I'm going in, checked out the building. Uh, and I, I think me and Tim might have a video of like the first day I came here. I came with a video camera. Mm-hmm. I have it. I definitely have it somewhere. I don't know what hard drive is on. <laughs> but there's video of me like going in here for the first time going, holy shit, like this place is pretty cool. Like yeah. I can see it. I don't know how this would work, blah, blah, blah. So the original idea was, you know, in my head, I was like, all right, we'll do all of our production downstairs. And then all upstairs will be just tap room. And yeah. then we'll have this as our event space. Yeah, now, yeah. This would be an event room. That would be the tap room. Yeah. And uh, so I talked to the realtor. I was like, hey, you know, let, let me get a meeting with the landlord. I'm also going to, I'm going to have, I want the landlord to be there. I'm going to get the city of New Haven. I'm going to get the building department. Mm-hmm. I'm going to get the fire marshal yeah. and the health department. I'm going to get all these people to come through on one day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And mind you, that's like seven different departments trying to right. all coordinate yeah, one day that's crazy. Uh, but i was able to get it done i don't know how it happened but i was able to get all these people there um within like a you know certain time span we uh, did a walk through the building i explained what i wanted to do blah, blah blah and they said well you can't do this because of that blah blah, blah. i was like okay i think we can make this man i can, think we can make this work but i got everyone involved from the beginning and uh an architect too i think i had the architect there that day i can't remember but we got it done uh, and started going to negotiations with the, land, the, the landlord. Said, all right, this is the deal. We basically, so this was 2021. We signed the lease in July of 2021. I had to think of the time frame here. <laughs> um, and I don't know if it was a post-COVID thing, whatnot, but like the city of New Haven shuts down. Like all these departments... Oh, we're on we're on summer break. Oh, say so, hold on, man. we're a fucking city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You don't fucking shut yeah. down yeah. for a month. So city plan. Now I just signed this lease, and I was able to negotiate some free rent. Yeah. But now I have no lease. Oh, sorry, sorry. I have I have the lease. No one in city hall or would talk to me. City plan. Nobody from the 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 zoning department. All these people were just MIA. Wow. Then there was the. Um, they were on break, which to me I think is kind of is a joke. Cause like as a city, there's no we're paying you. You're a yeah, fucking you're paid yeah, yeah, yeah. employee. Yeah. You should be there all year long. You want to take your fucking vacation, take it. Yeah. But not you don't shut down as a department. That's a like if I was to be the mayor, that's a that cutting that shit out <laughs> yeah, 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 right yeah. out the rip. There's none of this whole department shuts down. We're a fucking city. All right. Anyways, I hope they hear that one day. <laughs> Anyways. Um, so now I'm fucking panicked because I'm like, all right, I have all this stuff. We'll wait a month. And I'm getting no communication. I'm emailing, emailing, no communication. You can't go, you go into the city hall, the department's closed. There's nobody fucking answer. Finally, I had hit up economic development and they got back to me and uh, this guy, Will, was involved. But Will was basically like a temp employee, all right? Fucking awesome. He was a temp employee. He has no clue what the fuck's going on. Yeah. But he was like, he's a city plan guy. He was the, the person I was, the person I was issued to handle the, the project. <laughs> all right. So he's like, all right, dude, we're going to get you. You're on schedule for like uh, September, blah, blah, blah. Oh, I think it was like September or maybe it was August. I can't remember. He's, he, he's like, we're good. We're going to be on the, you're going to be on the bill, bill for this, blah, blah. And mind you, 
uh, this is for the zoning appeals thing because we had to get a, a, a change of our zoning to allow for liquor to be served here. Oh no, to manufacture beer. We were able to serve beer, but we were, because the thing didn't say manufacturing of beer particularly, it said manufacturing, just say they, they needed an approval. Um, so they go ahead and uh, so he's like, I'm gonna get you on the next meeting and um, cool. So time's coming up, time's coming up, and I'm like, I'm not hearing nothing. Yeah. And um, I finally go like, hey, like, we have the meeting next week, like Tuesday or something yeah. like that. He's like, um, what's the deal? He's like, oh, you didn't get the notice? I'm like, oh. what? He goes, oh, we had to push the meeting because we didn't send out notices to all the people about, because it's something you're, you're supposed to put up a placard in front of your building for 30 days or something like that that says like, you know, Board of Zoning Appeals meeting regarding this property, yada, yada, yada. And I go to him, I was like, are you fucking kidding me right now? I was like, we've been sitting here. What the fuck have you been doing from July yeah. to September? Yeah, like, or, you know, right now. Like, so now we push it. I think it was like October or maybe. <sighs> I can't remember. Dude, it's fucking. <laughs> I have so many grades here. <laughs> yeah. Um, so now did we get the, the, zo the zoning thing done. Uh, and, and, and mind you, during this wait period, someone from uh, economic development was like, you should go to like the Fairhaven Community Management Team meeting to you know, introduce yourself, tell them what your business is doing, blah, blah, blah. And it sounds like a really good thing to do. Oh, yeah, I'm going to introduce myself. I'm going to open a business in your neighborhood. And um, so I go into this meeting, and, and, and I sign up there. I have this like whole like pitch, like, hey, we're Armada Brewing, blah, blah, blah. This is all right, like what we want to do. And I'm just looking, you know, I have a Board of Zoning Appeals meeting coming up. I would like for your approval, yada, yada, yada. I go into this meeting and they fucking just shut me. They're like, what? No. Gigantic Movie Studios is coming in here. You're going to fuck up the whole plan. Like, they were not, I, like, I did, like, they had, they were so dead set on this Gigantic Movie Studios thing that nobody wanted to hear about anybody else coming into the neighborhood yeah. but Gigantic. Because Gigantic had proposed this imaginary storyline where they were going to take off all of the property around here and build this magic movie studio. Yeah. Um, and yeah. so like I go into this meeting and I'm like, I'm kind of getting handed to me. I was going to mean like, like, welcome. We're so excited. Yeah. You're going to come into the neighborhood. Yada, yada, yada. Dude, the first thing that happened to me, I was like, I was like, just shut the fuck out. I was like, I go to my wife and I go, what the fuck are we doing? I was like, "What? The, that was not what I expected." Yeah, yeah. So they like, "Well, we're gonna we're gonna hold off on our approval till the next month's meeting because we really we need to reconvene about this." And during that time, I mean, whatever dirty work that needed to get done, yeah. whatnot, they wanted to find a way to that the brewery wasn't going to be a good idea thing for the neighborhood. But here's the thing: I already had a fucking lease signed. Yeah. I already had all like my. I already have a loan on this yeah. through the you know through my bank. I was already so far ahead of the game that like there was no there was no stopping us right. at this point, but like it was a lot of emotion. Like, dude, are we not welcome to the neighborhood? And there was a lot of people that did stick up for us, you know, especially when you start reading the comments. But uh, you know, on the news, like the independent articles, it yeah. was like, you know, uh, uh, don't spill your popcorn. You know, brewery is <laughs> yeah. gonna ruin this movie idea. <laughs> I don't know what the fucking headlines were, but like you know, there was there was drama around it, and yeah. it is what it is. But I had a lot of support from the city. Like economic development is very supportive. But like it's about the entire com the area. It's not just one movie studio. Yeah. And the thing is, like the movie studio kept lacking on their ability to be able to show finance, to be able to show they they actually had their ducks in a row. And so while there was a lot of community support in, in favor of them. Like, oh, they're going to create all these jobs, yada, yada, yada. No one ever came to me. No one ever talked to me. Like, yeah. no one, like, I was, I was open to, I was like, you guys, here's my address. Here's, you know where to find me. We're in the building right now. And uh, so I had all this time where I couldn't build out anything. I basically wasted the six months we were supposed to get a free rent Jeez. to build out. We couldn't do nothing. So we started, couldn't build out until October. We finally got, we go to the bees, we finally have our Board of Zoning Appeals meeting. And um, so we have that meeting, and uh, let me think real quick about this. We go through it, and it gets to the point in time to the vote. Yeah. And uh, we, I think we barely made it. Yeah, there was one guy who, like, there was one girl who asked a bunch of questions yeah. and then goes, at the very end, well, I can't vote because... I'm like a state employee and we gave state funds to that or something like that. I go, 
well, you weren't even allowed to ask questions hypothetically. Yeah. And then there was this one dude who was very really hung up on it. I can't remember what his name is, but yeah, he didn't he didn't end up giving us the approval of it. Uh, but anyways, we got it. I cried that night. I was like, "Fucking Christ!" <laughs> cried, and then we went right to we went right to work. I got on. I was like, "All right, get me all the fucking paperwork. Let's fucking go." Yeah. So now that we got our, we got our building permit because building permit gave us approval to build out, but they didn't allow us to build out. They say you get a white. They can make a vanilla. They call it vanilla box. So you can build out this stuff. And I was like, well, I'm not going to build out fucking anything if I don't get this other approval yeah, right. because now I'm just wasting money. And if I lose it, like I, I still had in our clause of the lease, like I had this period of time, like I can dip out if I can't get the approvals. Yeah. So October comes around and mind you at this point too, like it was just crazy because utility companies didn't want to give us heat. So we operated and built this place out <laughs> from October to like fucking February. Yeah. We finally got heat. Oh no, wait, did we get heat? I don't think we got heat at all. Wow. We didn't get heat at all until like March. Wow. Yeah, so we built this place out in the fucking ice cold. I had burner, like those propane burners, yeah. like the the throwers yeah. in here. We did whatever we could, <laughs> layered up. Dude, oh my god, but we we got we built it out October to March. Yeah. And uh we built out the place. And got it to where it was, um, and I was I was you know kept in contact with a lot of the city officials like the building department and the health department. So I was always calling them up, asking questions. I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. Yeah. Right. I didn't have a GC. We GC'd it ourselves. Right. Um, and just like all right, this is where we're gonna do this. Hey, do you know a buddy that does floors? Do you, oh, oh, I knew my buddy Zach. My buddy Zach came through. We know each other from back in the day when we used to skateboard, but we all have mutual friends. So I got reacquainted with him and I, like he did word work. So he made the bar upstairs. Nice. He did the railings up in the, the, the Queens lounge on the, the, that big hole in the floor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That big hole in the floor with the stair set. He did all that welding. So he was able to put that all together. And so it was just a bunch of us coming together. We all knew each other um, and we got it done, but there were so many delays. Like I couldn't get three phase power to the building. And our chiller downstairs is a three-phase chiller. Yeah. So the chiller is the heart of the building. It runs the cooling system for all the beers. It runs the cooling system for the actual cooler itself. I'm like, dude, every delay possible you could possibly get. Yeah. From the water company to this to that, you name it. Like, everyone delayed us. I think we possibly could have built it out from October to January if we had no delays. Yeah. 60 yeah. days, it could have been done. Because we, we would have been around the clock getting it done. But it was like you make it 10 se- you make ten steps and you have to go back two. And then you make another 10 and two. Then you couldn't get concrete at a certain time of the year. So we had to dig up the trench drains. Yeah, you can't get concrete. Like uh, there's a time. Like, there's an off season for there's concrete. There's an off season yeah, for yeah, concrete. Yeah, yeah. It's too cold. too cold. I'm Italian. It I feel care. like we can always yeah. get concrete. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> well I done. fucking love it. Well done. Yeah. yeah. So, so <laughs> man. So putting you into the whole, the whole deep depths of it. I mean, what makes the conversation interesting anyways, right? <laughs> right. Um, so, yeah, we couldn't get concrete. So, like, all these fucking delays, like, you name it. And so finally, Mar- you know, like, things started really wrapping up in February, March. Yeah. And mind you, at this time, we had budgeted for this place to be built out with X amount of dollars. Way over budget. Way over budget. Okay, so now are we on the credit cards? <laughs> uh, we already had the loan, and we were fucking. The thing was, when we got the loan approved before we signed the lease, we had budgeted for 2021 March, oh, Jesus. April, yeah. May, June prices, what yeah. everything was at the time. Right. By the time we got our building permit, we started building on this place, everything had doubled, yeah. if not more, and yeah. you couldn't get a hold of shit. Yeah, right. Yeah. You couldn't get a hold of anything. I don't know if it was during the time there was um, there was a uh, when did that uh, the the canal Suarez Canal get blocked? Oh, was that? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like we were getting the repercussions. Yeah, I don't know if yeah, what it had to do with us, but like we couldn't get electrical things. Yeah. We couldn't get certain breakers. We couldn't like we were calling up every shop in the world to get certain like things we needed to make this place work. Right. We were like, well, that calling was, in favors that was everywhere. The fa- all the factories that made you all that stuff. Yeah. Transits, in China. China was shut down for months. Who knows, man? Yeah. But um, it was crazy. So it was it was crazy. Yeah. So April 22, 2022, we go through our final inspections 
and we get everyone to come in, and uh, we got the sign off. I was like, fuck, we did it. Mind you, at this, I was just like, we need to get the building open ASAP. If yeah, we yeah, yeah. are bleeding cash at the rate that we're bleeding right now, we're never going to fucking make it. I said, we need to get the building open. Even though we weren't even done with our, like, the full build out. Like, I think we still had certain furniture. That, no, all the furniture came together later, and we were able to build it all, all the furniture out. But um, uh, everything was coming in the last minute. And um, I said, we, we had no TVs. We had no projector. Yeah. We just had the music running. You know, if you were to look at this office on like the day that we opened, it was a fucking shit show. Like it, I, 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 it, it was just, just shit everywhere. Yeah. I said, just get the building open. So we opened up. We had that like grand opening. We had the friends and family night yeah. or like the industry night. And it was a shit. Oh, the point of sales. The point of sale company, I'm not going to mention who they were because they don't deserve any credit. But the point of sale guys that we originally hired or, or, or got the point of sales from. Yeah. Awful. The worst experience. We, sh we should have got square uh, from the beginning, yeah, yeah, yeah. but we didn't. We were like, oh, you know, everyone was like, go, don't go with square. Go with this company. Go with that company. And I was like, so we should just listen to our gut instinct and just stuck with square from the beginning. Yeah. So we ended up going with this other company. And so the day of we launch, we got the point of sales the day before. We did not know how to run them. Yeah. We did not know how to do nothing. Uh, they, they got an insult. So they had showed up that week, but they didn't get insulted the day before. And mind you, like, the communication with this company was awful. You can't do anything yourself. They need to hire, you know, you had to pay a technician to come out there, blah, blah, blah. Um, it was a disaster. So I feel so bad because, like, the, 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 the friends and family night, like, I really wanted to spend my time, like, hey, you thank know, you yeah, yeah, so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really appreciate yeah, yeah, yeah. it. I was, like, running around like a oh, fucking, shit, dude, yeah. dude, we can't get this credit card to run. We can't get that to run. Oh, they, how do you make a tab? How do you do this? Or the tabs aren't working, blah, blah, blah. Oh, man. But anyways, we got the building open. <laughs> And, um, yeah, we got the building open, and now we've been here for two years and change, and that's the story. <laughs> I mean, I could probably go into more, but that is the story. I think it's like a rocky story, man, like yeah. rags to riches and what, not riches, but yeah. like, still broke. <laughs> but you know what I'm going to, like, I want to go back to when you said something about, like, the community, like, I want to be part of this community. Your, your entire basis, foundation, like I don't know what your mission statement is, I don't know, but community has to be part of that because you are so big on the community that you're here and part of. Mm -hmm. So it's odd to me to hear them hear that they might not have wanted you because at this point, it seems like they are all very thrilled that you're here. You do a lot of community events and- Yeah, we're trying to do things to bring people to Fairhaven. Right, like Fairhaven is a kind of forgotten about part of the city um, in many regards. I mean, we do, the community does do their things over there, but we're trying to bring people here. Um, back in the day, it was hopping. Like, you get people that come through the store, like, yo, I grew up on that street. Or, you know, I, my, my parents lived there for years. Yeah, like, yeah. it was a neighborhood that was lively. Yeah. And just due to neglect, um, and uh, let's call it a neglect, city neglect, and um, wealth indifferences, mm -hmm. and um, I'll also say white flight. Yeah. In many regards, the neighborhood fell apart, yeah. and it's sad. Uh, but there's still people like the the people that live in this this neighborhood, these areas are some of the fucking best people ever. Like, we get people coming in, they're like, oh my God, there's a brewery here? <laughs> and we have so many regulars yeah. from the neighborhood that love coming here. Bring their children. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> they're like, I thought Fairhaven was like, you know, you know, uh, this horrible fucking place. I'm like, that's just like saying, like, uh, you, you heard something in the news that like, uh, uh, I, don't, I would give an example. If you heard a gunshot sh happen, you know, in East Haven, you'd be like, oh my God, East Haven's so bad. Right. Well, Dude, gunshots, gun things happen, violence happens everywhere. everywhere. Robberies happen everywhere. everywhere. They happen in Greenwich. Yeah. They happen, you name it. The thing is Fairhaven, like I said, just due to inequalities, has been given this really bad reputation. Um, and people need to look aside from that. And when they get, get over this um, manufactured fear that's like in their brain that like, oh, that's a bad part of town. Like that's, 
they are like, oh, wait, that's actually really fucking cool over there. Yeah. We can make something amazing happen here. Yeah. Uh, but a lot of that manufactured fear is through media and just, you know, <laughs> Uh, old wives tales like you know oh fair haven i saw that in the news like so and so got shot it's like yeah so and so got shot in fucking west haven i don't know they they got shot in orange shit fucking happens we're humans we're evil we're kind bad things happen all yeah we're assholes (laughs) shit happens all over the place but if you come here dude there's families that come here we have amazing events here we have live pro wrestling dude the cops came into the live pro wrestling last the other day they're like Holy fucking shit. This is awesome. Yeah. Like, they didn't know this type of stuff was going on here. Yeah. You know? And and granted, you know, they, there are your run-of-the-mill type of uh, – not run-of-the-mill, you know. There are some people who are um, economically hardshipped that happen to be in the area mm-hmm. that are finding ways to make the living by scrapping metal and doing whatever. And they happen to be crossing through here. Right. But that's just – it's an industrial fucking yeah. area. Yeah. There's a lot of abandoned warehouses. Yeah. It's a fucking gold mine for them. Yeah. So we're they're not going to go. They're not going to strip the copper out of your neighbor's house. Right. Yeah. Or maybe they will when they leave. But you know, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, for them, they see an opportunity. You know, uh, let's call them the um, New Haven 2024s. <laughs> 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 uh, anyone got that 49ers joke? But anyways. <laughs> Uh, it's it's a different part of the it's a different part of the city. Um, New Haven does need, I think New Haven needs a lot of revitalization in terms of just giving people a reason to come here, and, uh, for anything. Sure. I think d- downtown has its 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 it has its, its imageries, and a lot of people are hesitant to go downtown. They don't like to pay for parking. Parking is a pain in the ass. Yada yada yada. Yeah. Um, but it you know what. It, it's it's True, yeah. I've lived in a city. It's actually it's not that bad. Actually, yeah. 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 Uh, we still have to pay our parking tickets in, in You Portland. didn't pay your parking ticket. I didn't yet? pay mine yet. Yeah. Jesus I'm probably Christ. never it's driving. Sixty three dollars now. I'm never driving that car into Portland again. I'll yeah. Must not have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so New Haven, I think needs more reasons to bring people down here. Yeah. A lot of people are hesitant. They don't like the traffic. They don't like the this. The one thing we hear about us is obviously, you know, oh, I heard that's a sketchy neighborhood. No, it's not. There's kids playing at the playground right down the street every freaking day. There's a private school across from Chapel Park that people pay fucking boatloads of money for their kids to go to. And you're going to tell me that's that's a bad neighborhood, but the, these guys with all this money are putting their kids there? Um, you know, you come to the brewery, it's free parking. Yeah. You don't have to worry about that. There's no, there's no really no excuse. It's other than just you know, getting people off their fucking ass to come out here. But when they come out here, they have a great, amazing time, and they're like, "This is fucking awesome." I wish I knew about it sooner. What about the beer, Lisa? The beer don't suck. Damn right. Damn right. Yeah. So you gotta step outside of your shell. Yeah. Live your own experiences. Don't go by media. Don't go yeah. by everything else. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, media. if if you lived by that, you'd never go anywhere. They all live in the bubbles. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to say that my family always wished that you were closer. I myself always yeah. wished you were I mean, closer. I wish was closer. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you're the. Yeah. We, we love it here. I got a room. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we I can just room. camp out here from yeah, now on. We'll just sleep in the office. Um, but every time we come here, it's a different community experience. Mm-hmm. We always meet new people. Um, there was a gaggle of people on their bicycles one day. They yep. all just rode up. Yeah. And, and yeah, and it's, I, I don't see that at other breweries. And we're talking like, well, I'm, it's just my opinion, the ones you that you want to hit. Because they're just <laughs> in the road. Like all types of Oh, those type of bikers. Yeah. Oh, got you, got you, got you. Yeah. yeah. The ones who you're like, man, if bicycles. I just sneezed right now, I would, yeah, like, I would be helping out. <laughs> Oh, I can tell stories of this. Yeah. Respect, respect the cycles. Respect the cycles. I know. Yeah. Don't ride. Don't ride tandem. <laughs> Front and back, man. Yeah. Always on your left. Single file line. Yeah. Single file yeah. line. Single file. Yeah. You have to. Yep. I know. I've been in that situation where I've definitely been stuck behind. Uh, yeah. You know. Tour to New Haven. Yeah. Tour to Haven. Yeah. Tour to Haven. Tour to Haven. <laughs> Tour to Haven. I like that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so that's uh, it's where we're at right now. We love our spot. We have a great community. You know, we have a great local community. It's growing. 
Um, our ambassador club ship uh, memberships are growing. Uh, we're trying to do exciting things. I think um, I think post COVID, I think the the craft beer industry has definitely seen a big shift as of lately, um, and you're seeing it across the board. It's not just one brewery after the other. You know, it's not just one brewery or one. No, it's location. the industry in general. The yep. industry in general has definitely taken a shift. I think that a lot of people were, you know, they joined, they got in the craft beer for certain reasons. And they realized that certain of those reasons became, you know, unhealthy, you know, pastry stouts and fucking, you know, they consumed more sugar in a pastry stout than they would an entire day. Yeah, right. You know, so I think a lot of people left it because of that, but they were big supporters. But if you're looking for, you know, a good community time, if we can make beer casual like they do in Czech, yeah. that would be great. Yeah, yeah. Where it doesn't always need to be a sit down with, you know, uh, I need to have a full meal and eat, you know have a beer yeah. thing. It's like no, I'm just gonna go out for a couple beers, exactly. you know, as a family, as a you know, as a group, as a you know, families meeting up with other families. Make it more casual. It doesn't need to be um, a, a binge drinking type of thing, and it also doesn't need to be something where it's a fucking dessert every time you drink a beer. Right. You know, so we try, we focus here on making low ABV, sessionable beers, though we have the occasional, you know, we have our double IPAs, we have to accommodate you guys. And, you know, every now and then we drop in. We have we have one, but we're not going to overwhelm you. Most of the beers you get here are 4%, 5%. That's yeah. that's it. Um, we want you to come drink in session, be casual, and have a good time. Go home safely. That's it. Drink and then for you, the flavor, not for the ABV. Yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah. Dr drink for the crisp flavor, not some fucking... Yeah. Cupcake beer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, that's how you really feel. I really feel. I fucking hate that part of the industry. I really, yeah. I think that it was such, and it's, it was a fad. You can see that it was a fad. It's clearly evident. I never liked it from the beginning. Granted, we we probably explored, I think we made it like an ice cream beer one time. Like, you know, just for fun. We did use yeah. waffle cones. Yeah. But it's like, like to me, I, I if I go home and I crack that beer and I'm like, I can't even fucking drink this thing. Like I'm not, I have no interest in it. Yeah. Like how many crazy, like extreme brewing with Sam Calgione was, I think he made that book or there was an extreme brewing thing, which was cool. He was like trying to promote extreme brewing, use different spices and blah, blah, blah. That's like cool. But then people were like, yo, let's put fucking chicken wings in a beer. <laughs> Dude, chicken, like fucking chicken wings. Like, it sounds like a great idea. And it's like, it's a fucking awful idea. The oil in that's an awful thing. Like, what are you trying to do here? No wonder why you have fucking uh, heart attack after you drink that fucking <laughs> yeah. beer. No, no. but yeah, I, I I think that side of the industry, I, I, I just cut that, cut that. No, 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 no. I just wish it. I wish it never existed. I think that it really. I think it was a toxic part of the industry, and it really killed. It really killed people's like likeness for beer and you're seeing that yeah. because everyone tried to jump on this trend everyone was pumping out all these fucking beers that were probably awful tasting most of the time with zero uh, balance in their tap list yeah yeah and it was like that heavy dude do you want a fucking red velvet cupcake stout right. or do you want a fucking vanilla chocolate stout do you yep. want a fucking oreo stout as i go to a brewery there's 17 of them like i just want a yeah. fucking lager yeah, beer and i'll be lager. done Ooh. beer yeah. flavored beer those yeah. are in the tanks yeah man yep Beer flavor beer, but good yeah. beer, yeah. good beer, because there's still a lot of people that still need some help. Yeah. Well, there's there's I, I can't say they make sure beer. They just need help making their beer, yeah. and they did. They got also got into the industry for the wrong thing. So people that go to explore beer for the craft beer, they go to a brewery and they're like, oh, I've been to a brewery, but yeah, they, these craft breweries fucking suck. No, the fucking brewery you went to fucking happens to suck. Right. And I'm sorry, but not every there, there's a fucking dud in every you know. There's levels. Yes. Well, Levels even, to everything. Yeah. When we I mean, were in Portland, we, were in Portland, I was same, just gonna say. We, we had the same experience when we were in Portland. It was just like, it's like, hold on, wait, is the Connecticut craft beer scene gotten that better, or is just the beer getting, you know? I will say, worse? Connecticut, <laughs> Connecticut craft beer as a whole puts out. It is the underdog of the country yeah. in terms of good quality beer. Every like there's so many breweries you go to that are putting out good quality beer, and it's probably you know probably why people are like I don't need to leave my neighborhood. I got a fucking yeah, good no, brewery yeah, down yeah, the street, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I don't need to go drive to New Haven. You know I get it, dude. There's some breweries putting out some really good stuff, and you know and you get the ones that are all over the new media like Fox Farm and um, I'll just say Fox Farm for the example. You know Fox Farm gets a lot of. Uh, 
a lot of attention. Um, they have the Hill Farm said vibe. You know, they go to this place. You drive out to the middle of Bumblefuck. You can only get two beers. <laughs> right, right, you know, right. they literally mimic the exact yeah, yeah. you know vibe of what Hill Farm said does. And um, but they make really good beer, and they, he's uh, they're phenomenal at what they do. Uh, but also the atmosphere is a big big factor of that. Yeah. Um, so th- like they bring a lot of attention to the state. Um, I mean, right down the street, we have East Rock. East yeah. Rock makes some fucking great, right. great yeah. loggers, man. They're they're good at what they do. Absolutely underrated. Yeah. yeah, I think I think I think East Rock and Armand are probably <laughs> both yeah. underrated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I no, think uh, yeah, East Rock does make some good clean stuff. I love and you know, I'll go out Vienna Lager if I can yeah. catch that. You know, on draft. Uh, I'm very hesitant. I will say I'm I, I'm only a beer snob when I go out. <laughs> Because I'm very hesitant to, to ex- experiment when I go to like a restaurant. Oh, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. But if I know I've had that brewery's beer, I'll usually always order it. Yeah. Um, but what is your go-to beer? Like if you're out somewhere. Budweiser. Really? But heavy? <laughs> I, I, I would. So if I go I to like. So valid. Right <laughs> I would. So I would. I, I go for a Bud Heavy, uh, or. So I, guess I will go for a Bud Heavy. If there are no craft beer lager options that I know that I'd like, I typically don't drink IPAs uh, outside of the brewery itself. I'll only drink the IPA at the brewery, and it's just that's my thing. I've uh, I've just come to find like I've been served a green beer before, yeah. uh-huh. and like I mean, the beer actually was fucking green. So oh. yeah, yeah, I've had an IPA from a very well-known brewery. Oh, Not it was a green beer. The, yes, and I was like, "Hey, did you guys have like that Bud Light fucking green, you know, beer yeah, on the pour? Yeah. No, this is their draft line." I go, "I don't think you guys cleaned your draft lines right, or right. they didn't rinse them properly because right. this beer, I know whose beer this is. I'm yeah. very well acquainted with them, yeah. and it should not be it's not be green. Um, right. And so I've had experiences like that before. Um, so it sounds like you're more you drink." But heavy more so only because a, it's a, faithful. It's, it's, it's a, a it's a consistent factor. beer that you know no matter yeah. what. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll enjoy that. Beer. Yep, I'll go there. So like yeah. typically we like to go out. We like to go to certain restaurants, and I'll be be honest with you, the restaurants we go to typically don't have craft beer options. Okay, okay. And it's not because we choose to, but like if I go to Dive Bar in West Haven, they have a bunch of craft beer. I'm gonna go to get craft beer there. Yeah, yes, yeah. but like you know we go to these restaurants. They they're still like big distributor yeah. spots. So it's like, what am I going to order on there? Well, I definitely don't want a Sapporo. I only will have that with sushi. Mm-hmm. But it's like, if I'm going to go eat a sandwich, I'll get a Bud Heavy. Yeah. yeah. Not a Bud Light. Bud Heavy. Agreed. What did we want Johnny's opinion on? Oh, oh. Yeah. So I, unlike these other two dimwits next to me, I'm telling the story, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. have uh, perused the vast majority of Connecticut breweries. Mm-hmm. I think we made a list. There's only seven I have not been to, unless they've opened in the past like two or three months. They're now saying none of those count. I have to start from the beginning because I wasn't with them when I went to all of those breweries. You were not a brewery or official. You were not official brew head. You were a. You were a. Uh, do I movie. have to start you were over again, or do all of my previous visits count? You were a normie. Have you ever gone to college? Yeah, yep. All right. Do you understand how the credit system works? I do. Okay. So you uh, go to one college, mm-hmm. and you, uh, you attend all these classes, yep. and uh, you get credits for those classes. Correct. And then you're like, you know what? I don't like this college. I'm going to go to this other college. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And this other college goes, you know what? I get it. You have all these credits for these classes you attended. Mm-hmm. But you know what? Like where this is going, by the way. Your class fucking sucks. <laughs> Why the fuck were you taking this art liberal arts class? We're not going to account that a credit because it has nothing to do with your fucking degree. I hope this isn't recording. Oh. Oh, and you can leave it recording. This is good. It is so Oh, you're trying to zoom in. <laughs> so, if the Brewheads College yeah. accepts the credits, take them where you can. If they do not, you just have to fucking eat shit and spend a bunch of money on college. I've already spent enough money on college yeah. and beer. It's not my fault they don't get out as often as I do. It's not our fault that we're not teachers that have the entire summer off. <laughs> well, I'm not a teacher. Sorry, yeah. nurse in a school that got the entire summer off for 10 years. That's her name. 
Nurse Summer up. Nurse Summer up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Not anymore. Not anymore. Yeah. Your Fine. nurse makes more you, than you all of us. You know what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nurse not broke ass, yeah. bitches. <laughs> I believe my new name is Don Crabio, by the way. Don Crabio. Don Crabio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kiss the yeah, ring. I yeah, am now a Don. Yeah. Um, all right. I, I didn't really see that going that way, but Johnny, I respect your decision. <laughs> I mean, I, I could, I say, oh yeah. I mean, they, it counts, but it's like you know, under whose, uh, under whose um, uh, authority. Yeah. Yeah. You know that was a perfect analogy because as soon as you said like a college, she's like, oh fuck. <laughs> and also. Because they have the right so to fast. accept your credits or not accept your credits. <laughs> so fast. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. As soon as he, as soon as he said college. So well, because they think it counts if I'm not with them. Have you ever been to college? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is life. Yeah. And this well, is the guards that they get. Everyone gets dealt every day. Yeah. It's not fair. <laughs> Life's not fair. I never it's said I was fair. fair. <laughs> I right, said I was so fun. I, so if I go to a brewery. Without them, now that I am a brew head, does it, that still count? Does that it's, now it's count? It's now it's an accredited that, that course. Okay. Yeah, no, okay. Credit, so accredited course visit. More breweries than you. Hey, That's listen. Disorder. At least you know you you know you can cut out you can weed out all the bullshit. You know. Yes. But I will say, <laughs> this is gonna be even better. That right now, that you're still behind Mike and myself. No, because if I have no, to start no, no. over, you motherfuckers have to start no, over. Because no, because we are the college. We, yeah, <laughs> we are the college. <laughs> you know, no shit. Can you go talk to your guidance counselor? About yeah. this? <laughs> Do they have an HR? Yeah. yeah. I'd like to audit the courses. Yeah. <laughs> we're making a list. Fuck you, we're making a list. And I'm going to beat that before you... I'm going to beat that. I have, no, I have no doubt. You You only have two weeks to beat it. I don't even have two weeks. Yeah, so... What's a, what's the two weeks deadline? Um, she she has a I, real job. I, oh. <laughs> I grew no up and got a big summers off. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, she's got. Two I didn't do. Here. Yeah, fuck off. I mean, well, I mean, do you, do you work Monday through Friday now, or you got to? Yes. Um, so so Monday through Friday and uh, no weekends. Also, yeah. I'll, I'll just. What is your uh, what is your expected public image because of uh, this new yeah. position? Director of nursing. Yeah. Um, what they don't like know <laughs> won't, <laughs> won't hurt them. them. Yeah. I think that uh, don't don't we don't need a poster behind us that says director of nursing at where you are. So right. that I mean that you're not advertising. Yeah. Correct. Correct. That. Yeah. You're not going to wear your nurses. Um, as long as I think I am professional and while well, there and when I'm talking about yeah. them, I hold myself in a professional manner. Yeah. We'll be okay. I got you. I mean, in all honesty, I, you're never not professional in a spot that can be seen by others. Have you seen her at the beer fest? Yeah. Well, <laughs> so you can you can be hidden at a beer fest. They always find me. Yeah. They do. True. I was at, this year at Rising Pine. I was hiding like Mike was walking. And I, I mean, was, you're walking around with a fucking logo on the back of your yeah. bed. It's like. <laughs> Where's Waldo? <laughs> yeah, oh, just, just to let you know, since we're, you know, giving you rules to the college and everything. Um, no, there on. was no contract. This is, this is good. This okay. is good. Whilst in our class, yeah. and we are sharing classroom time, Okay. Okay, because we are not teachers, obviously. Yeah. We are not above you. Um, <laughs> I know. While you're wearing... <laughs> you're bottom, clearly. <laughs> there is nothing that you can't say. Oh, or do noted and well aware. <laughs> I'm more letting everybody else know. Yeah. Yep. I think they're aware too. Yep. If they've had any. If Lisa gets drunky, <laughs> drive her home. Pretty much. Or call an Uber. Call an Uber. It's probably better. Don't get her foot stuck in the door. <laughs> Whilst on the highway. Yeah, that story's never gonna. That was so funny. Pull while, over. While, while Johnny, have you text. ever? Uh, Pre-gamed a, a um, <laughs> pre-gamed a uh, opening event because it was a long ride and you felt like you needed. <laughs> I'll tell you this: I, I, sometimes I, I, I will get drunk before I go into big meetings. Oh, there you go. Just to get the edge off. <laughs> I can't say drunk, but I'll like. 
I'll like have something coming up. Yeah. Like, all right, all right. Like, uh, teacher conference. You know what? No. <laughs> That's not illegal, by the way. It's, if a teacher can teach drunk. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I can't say I don't. I, I can't say I get drunk. But what I'll do is I will like before I leave, I'll do three beers. Yeah. Just to get the edge off. You know, just like, and I'll be like, all right, all right, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, all right, you know. Even sometimes with the podcast, like, I'll, sometimes I'll, like, drink, I'll, I don't want to, I have to say it. I won't drink in excess, but, like, prior to coming here, like, I had a beer before you guys came in here, just fucking, just yeah. took it down. That's why we, we, it was double fisting when the beers yeah. came up. Yeah. You know, I'll have a beer, just, like, get myself going. But, yeah, pre-gaming, it all depends on what it is. I've definitely showed up to things already tipsy. Mm-hmm. So that way I can just, now I just, now it's a balancing game. Yeah. Right, you know, right, right, right. it's yeah. like, all right, every beer I do have has an effect. Yeah. You know? Balance is what yeah. I'm known for. Yeah. That's now, they're, quieter during the beginning of the podcast, and then I start to come up. Yeah. The beer, my funny comes out, and not that, like... Yeah. So I made a huge mistake. Poor Brando had to deal with the repercussions. Um, I just got the text message. I, I decided that uh, we were driving to Fairfield, and I didn't want to be sober when we got there. Also, it's a long fucking ride mm-hmm. in all this traffic. For a brewery opening, and it was free, free, free every. Was it the illicit one? Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. And so was... I had a couple blast offs, nine and a half percent, heading down. In the car. Jesus oh, well, God. actually, 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 it was... Uh, I wonder why no one wants you guys in the breweries anymore. <laughs> Jesus. No, it's just me. And I get... Those two can you, still go. It's me. I get, what are, you, what are you doing? I'm having a roadie. Here, I got you one. And I'm like... <laughs> well, it's definitely not illegal to have a roadie in Connecticut. Right. No. So Connecticut... You can be passenger. You can yeah. have open container. We have an yeah, open yeah, container yeah. law. You can actually, like, as if you have some... passenger... Yeah. If you're yeah. si- if you're single or sorry if you're by yourself they'll they'll uh, yeah are you single yeah. <laughs> uh, I got it uh, got if uh, <laughs> you leave it uh, we'll be right back <laughs> uh, anyways uh, you uh you can have an open container as so long as if you have a passenger um, but yeah so I didn't know that yeah I didn't know that until. Well, after uh, into my drinking ages, um, I remember one time I was I was driving someone. Mm-hmm. I was uh, just had turned twenty twenty one, somewhere around that time frame, and they were drinking in the back. I was like, guys, what are you fucking doing? They're like, oh, you can you can have an open container. I didn't believe the story, <laughs> so I went to my mom, and my mom told me that my <laughs> my uncle used to fucking drink in the, like drink in the car all the time. Yeah. I was like, well, not he wasn't like an alcoholic, but he would have open containers yeah, in the car, yeah. you know, after golf and whatnot. I was like, oh shit, that's a fucking good loophole. Right. Yeah. We heard that from uh, Chris at, uh, you know, the owner of Great Falls. When we went up there for something, and we were leaving. We had cans. He's like, oh, you guys brought some for the road, and we're like, well, you know, of course we got to wait till we get home. And he's like, no, you don't. Yeah. Like, what, what are you talking about? He's like, yeah, passenger can drink. Yep. I'm like. He's like, yeah, just just switch off. And I'm like, son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> he was not endorsing drinking and driving. He no, was, of course uh, not. He was making a joke. Yeah, and letting us know we the it. actual law. Yeah. The rule of the law. Drinking and driving is always like a tough conversation. You know, hearing that drinking and driving thing, it's like, you see the dare ads and whatnot. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, they're like, you know, one drink puts you over the limit. It's like, whoa. It's like that's a it's a very touchy subject yep. because like you know cops, right. firefighters, yeah. politicians, yeah. all these motherfuckers have a beer, yeah. right. and they're driving themselves home. Yeah. Yep. So it's like it's a it's a I think that as a kid you believe everything that you're you know you're told. You watch right. these videos it's like dude I can't fucking drink I'm gonna fucking I'm gonna fucking I'm gonna crash into a wall. One beer in my nose is gonna turn. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like the veins are gonna yeah. pop. You know? No, oh, like, what happens is you know you have you have alcoholism, which I think they need to separate that. Right. You know, alcoholism is something where you, this person all they do is drink, yeah. and they're fucking on spirits. Yeah. It's the it's the spirit, motherfuckers. I mean, people. I mean, sure, granted, yes, to the guy who can down like a twelve pack of Budweiser is probably you know, yeah, still probably not able to drive home, but it's one of those tough ones. Well, yeah. Why did you say guy? Yeah. Lisa There's some broad. This is, I, 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 this is a, This is my thing about beer fest too. My thing about beer fest is like it's a it's a touchy subject because it, it yes. 
though we give everyone the five ounce pours or whatever they are, the two so the two ounce pours. And they're, they're like, oh, only pour two ounce pours. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah. Dude, two ounce pours is a fucking swig. Like, yeah. it's a swig if you really think about it. And the thing is, like, I would probably encourage more of a, a festival where, like, you just get, like, six tickets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, like you, like, you come to the festival, you get six tickets. Then after that, you get put back. Like, I don't know. Just make it more of, like, a, a casual sit down rather than, like, oh, let me see how many beers I can drink yeah, in the next, like, yeah, four yeah, yeah. I feel like there needs to be a, a revamping of, like, the beer fest, beer fest ideology. Like, can we turn it into an actual, like, October fest style where everyone just sits and casually drinks? You know, and they get yeah, to choose, like, yeah. during this X amount of period of time, you get six beers and, yeah. um, you know, whatever it may be. And you just hang out with your friends and you have fun games again. Right. Like, make it more entertaining rather than the whole, let me see how fucking plastered I can. Yeah. Granted, I mean, Oktoberfest, they do get plastered. But I just, something about the sampling of the small sips and whatnot and your ABV levels are all over the place. You're essentially just doing shots, endless shots Sh- of, of beer, beer yeah. in a rapid pace yeah. because you got to make it around yep. that large circle. Yeah. You want to try everything. And then <laughs> let's see if I can make it two times. Yep. And you go again. I thoroughly support the sitting and having like a common area where you can and i think that's what i liked about yard goats is because there's seats built in obviously Uh. and you know so alvarium used to get that corner spot at yard goat stadium Uh where in that i I would sit there because i want the experience of sitting and chilling i I don't need to pop even though i can power drink my way through and do sometimes (laughs) power drink my way through but that community feel and sitting and getting to know other people yeah. and talking about the beers, it needs to be more about the beer and not the shit face. Yeah. I, I can't even call it a fest. It's a no, beer. It, it's a. It's beer Olympics, yeah, basically. Beer walking. Like yeah. Beer walk around. Like a fest to me, like you had said, Oktoberfest, large tables, people you don't know, you're all yeah. sitting down. The beer strikes conversation. Yes. Now it's a. Now it's a. a, a group it's a large gathering for a purpose and you get to like it's a really uh, like i said if you, you have to incorporate activities into it yeah. in, in a way something entertaining um like i just i'm so i'm so over them and i think you know uh, seven years with the business but i've been doing festivals for 12 plus and like when we do the like for instance when we do the um so you think you can brew? Yeah. Mm-hmm. We limit the tickets on that thing. I don't want, you know, five hundred people here. It's not about the money. If you can't give us valuable feedback on these guys and that they actually make good fucking right. beer, right. then your your purpose of showing up is irrelevant. So like, I want you to go and talk to these people. I yeah. want you to be eloquent about your conversation and and um, you know your what you're drinking and like if you don't like it, dump it and move along. Yeah. You know, but I don't want people to go in there and just fucking taking them back. Yeah. So we we re- we ask a lot of responsibility of the participants to come in and say, "Hey, we need your feedback. Like this doesn't work without you." Uh, granted, yeah, some of these guys, you know, I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> <laughs> some of these guys I should never got voted in, but yeah, God damn it, Jack's basement. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, but um, we we, we yeah. always love we always love we love Jack. Yeah. He's great. Um. But he's won all three so far. Yeah. So I had to talk shit about him. Um, but it's more communal. It's more yeah. social. Yeah. So, uh, and he won with a cream ale in the last one. It's like, yeah. dude, what the fuck? I'm so a cream I'm ale? So a cream ale? Um, but anyways, yeah, like making it with, I think that, but also you're starting to see a huge dip in attendance on a lot of these uh, oh, beer yeah. festivals. Absolutely. So, yeah, the like, beer fest that we've been to, like, I don't know. This year, it's all of them. Yeah, it's across the board. Right. Even even as packed as Rising Pint was, because it was actually pretty that de- seemed, decent. It just seemed still like it wasn't as many people as it was the previous year. Yeah, I gotta say that I feel this year the most packed brew fest we've been to per area. Yeah. So you know, not like Rising Pints where you have you know like a million square feet. Here. I'm gonna go with. The Lime Rock one. Yeah, the Lime Rock one was 
per size. size. Yeah. yeah. That it's been in a long. Yeah, we couldn't make that one. Yeah, we were at, we had we were back to back events, but Chris, we know we know Chris very well, and yep. he Chris organizes very well. His 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 staff, they do a good job. Yeah, yeah. it was a that was our first time up there, and uh, Stephanie it, loves doing that event. Yeah, she does, and it was a really good event, great event, especially with the um, the uh, car sh- the mm-hmm. car show. Yep. A lot of surprises yeah. though at that. Yes. A lot of surprises. Yeah, yeah we were so. so when we um, did the judging. When we did the judging. We were actually surprised. Uh, Still Hill won quite a few. Oh. <laughs> be careful how you word that conversation. Yeah. We were very surprised. Still Hill won <laughs> quite a few awards. Sorry, Still Hill. I did not respect your beer prior, but now uh, clearly you won. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hey, sometimes the truth hurts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Your palate um, sucks, <laughs> bro. <laughs> it was just some surprises. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, Thomas Hooker, obviously a staple. Yeah. In, yep. in craft beer. Yeah, but, they, won a, um, they, they, they won a couple. won quite a few. Yes. Of the award. I think they won three or four. Yeah. And, and it was our, like. Our biggest surprise, though, was. Red Brewster. Red Brewster. Red Brewster. Right. It's, so, a, it's a brewery in Enfield that opened up, and when we went there the first time, it was. It was like Yeah. Yeah. I, I, was, I feel like, you know, the thing is, like, I hear that name. For, for the thing that, like, runs in my head is, like. Red Brewster, Red Brewster, go! <laughs> 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 like, Red Brewster, yeah. like Johnny on oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, It was not just Black Luster. It was, um, they had a lot of growing yeah. to do. Yeah. A lot of growing. A lot of growing to do. Um, they, they had. They did a lot of things where it was obvious that they didn't do a lot of the homework. Right. To open up a brewery. You listen to your story about how much work you did in the, the research, the, the yeah, questions, yeah, yeah. the yeah. relentlessness, and in, in being involved. And we're not talking that it was diff. You had you researched the knowledge. Yes, it was still difficult. Well, you didn't want to half ass it. Yeah, yeah. You, you wanted to make sure it was done. You're kind right. of a perfectionist. Yeah, but yet still, the, you had a fight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it was just very obvious that they didn't do the same research. Yeah, you could tell was- that they had an appreciation for. Craft beer. Yep. Um, it's like, hey, we can do this. Let's open up a brewery. And two open weeks up a, later. Yeah, open up a brewery, and it's like, yeah, you can't do that. You can't do that. Hey, mm. you might want to get this to make sure your beer kind of tastes okay. <laughs> gotcha. So they were putting like, <laughs> I, I, I can only imagine the horror stories. Yeah. yeah. It's unfortunate, and I think that's that. Also, like I said, that was a goes back to my example of like there were so many breweries that opened up just to open up and become a brewery that the passion wasn't really wasn't there, yeah. and I think that the customers could also see that. You know, long term speaking, that's why I think it's also. De- de- <clears throat> been very detrimental to the industry because we have so many of these places that like yes. people imagine imagine you don't have the luxury that you currently have right now and you're like you know someone goes like hey dude i'm gonna take you to like i know you don't drink beer but i'm gonna take you to a craft brewery yeah i'm like oh yeah yeah, yeah. and you know they take you to xyz mm-hmm. brewery um and you go into this brewery and you're like oh yeah you should, dude ipas are really kicking like ipas are like you know very popular in the bit industry, or, you know, or they have lager. And you go over, and this guy, first time going into this brewery, they go and they have a beer, and it's fucking, it's absolute garbage. You know, the beer. We should make that overall note. Yeah. The XYZ Brewery makes the worst beer. Yeah. Like, untap ratings, one star. I don't know. <laughs> so they go in there, and they experience that. They're like, well, now, like, to, to that me, like, the all craft breweries suck. It's, it's, there is no vetting process to become a, a, a professional brewery. Um, there is no like, there's no credentials you need to pass. Anyone can do it. It's just like it's, it's just like a restaurant, yes. you know. Yes. But the thing is, there's something about the craft beer industry um, that it makes such an impact on your first initial visit to a place that typically people decide right then and there whether or not they're ever going to come back to that spot. Very true. Um, and it's just, I mean, it's 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 a lot to do. It's it's just the industry um you know people can go to mcdonald's i I love this story uh, this one right here this example people go to mcdonald's and have their order fucked up every fucking time they go but they still go back to mcdonald's sure they go to a small business they have one thing fucked up and they never return again and they post about it and they fucking bitch about it and they'll get the bad review that blows my mind away the mental like uh, how are we ingrained that way to not give the small business a second shot rather than 
something else. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, like with the craft beer, the, back to the craft beer industry side of it, is like people are hesitant to go to craft breweries in general, or at least they were, and then it opened up, it had a boom. And then we saw, you know, some unhealthy habits develop within yeah. that, you know, beer production wise and, and, and so forth. And it became less of a casual thing, it became, the, you know, a one and done game, mm-hmm. you know. Um, oh, I, I, one double IPA, I'm done, you know, kind of a deal. Yeah. So conversation talk is, is more about the beer rather than actually getting to know you're, you're the person sitting in front of you. Um, you know, I kind of always despise that, like, oh. I could smell the rosemary. (laughs) (laughs) Do you use mosaic hops? Because I definitely, oh, I definitely get mosaic hops. And yeah, yeah, we totally use mosaic hops. And that, wait, what? Do we? No, (laughs) just let him, just let him have his moment. (laughs) Yeah, no, I love the, I'd like the snobbery, you know, for certain aspects, like you know, for being, for uh, uh, award competitions, mm-hmm. like that, that totally exactly. needs to be done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, that's even for the research side of the consumer. Yeah, sure. Like you want to know what beers uh, right. attract to you. Like, oh, this beer uses X amount of hop, you know, X hops in there. Like, I, I, I want to know what that is. Right. Um, but there's a time and place for everything, and I think the time and place when you're sitting down at a pub, you know, sitting just yeah. with your friend, a brewery. The reason why the restaurant association and all these like things fight the breweries mm-hmm. is because they had an environment that you could not beat. You weren't rushed for your seat. Yeah. You weren't rushed to get a tab. Yeah. Or you know what do you want? You go into a restaurant. They seat. They seat you. What can we get you to drink? Yep. What can we get you to eat? Are you guys all done? Yeah. Do you want dessert? Here's your check. Goodbye. Go. They're trying to get you out of there in half hour. They want to turn over the table. They want to turn over the table. And respectably so. They want every table is X amount of dollars on a year. Yep. Every seat equals X amount of dollars to that restaurant tour. Yep. At a brewery, these people were hanging out four hours, five yeah, hours, yeah, yeah. six hours. They're like, what the fuck? Like, how are these people hanging out for so long? And you know, they they didn't like that. Yeah. They didn't like that people were going to the breweries more. Well, they didn't they weren't rushed to order food. They were able to just go up to a food truck, grab yeah, food, yeah, grab food, you know, and and hang out, and, and hang out talk, talk, just have a good time. Yeah. And I know I'm going way off on a tangent on this, but uh, <laughs> I got to think about where I got to root my wrote my conversation back in on this. <laughs> um, uh, we were talking about. Uh, so you think you can broke? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bring it all the way back around. Bad, uh, bad uh, judging. Oh, we're talking about uh, it's snobbery. It's yeah. it's it's, 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 not, it's not the place for it. So you don't want snobbery when you're sitting down with your buddies. I just like I just want to talk. That's, that's yeah. true. I like to play games. I think games get everyone's oh, mind off of work. I think games get everyone's mind off of family problems, financial problems, uh, whatever may be going on in your life. You sit down and bust out an Uno deck with your friends, and you become the most competitive motherfucker in the room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, double skips not allowed, but we'll take it. Right, you know, I'll tell you right now, I'm never playing that fucking Uno you were playing at Labyrinth. Yeah. Never. Oh my God! It was like a reverse upside down yeah. Uno. Yeah, some of the, the Uno's gotten a little out of control. They need to get they need to get the they rounded get back in. Yeah, just for stick for to the regular Uno. Yeah, go back to basics. Did you know that there's a sequel? To a what? sequel? To Uno. There's another game called Dose. <laughs> I knew that's where you're gonna go with that. <laughs> I'm, I'm not even bullshitting. I didn't get <laughs> I, I I was gonna say that regardless. I was like, oh yeah, it'd be Dose, the sequel. No, yeah. is there a prequel? <laughs> Zero. <laughs> Zero. I, I like Zero. <laughs> Very with you with the communal thing because um, so we've been doing this for six, seven years now, and my wife is only just now in the past year really been like hanging out with me, going to the breweries because she just really did not think it was for her and i kept telling her like no it's everyone's just hanging out you don't necessarily have to drink beer yeah we can find something else for you to drink when your wife comes around it actually is quite exciting to see her because it's like oh wow that's so cool you know yeah. that you're, you're all coming together yeah it's yeah. It, it's one of those things where it's like it's community we just hang out we just have fun yeah we, and some of her kids. comments too are just like like this is what y'all do? Yeah. It's like, yeah. Yeah. Like, and and it's she just re- fun. Yeah. She realizes that okay, now I understand why you like to go out yeah. to breweries all the time. She got to see the social hour because I think that she was a probably in, 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 in ingrained like in her brain some yeah, stereotypical thing you see on TV. Yeah. The guys go out yeah. and they're drinking yeah. and they're being. Yeah. You know. and she, 
Uh, Come on, Mo, go, give me another duff. I don't know. <laughs> she thought she'd just be in the corner by herself yep. and not yep. really, you know, interacting with anything. I also don't think she realized how many women are out here, too, though. Yeah, true. She like, she just thought it was, like, these two idiots. She didn't realize that... There's a lot of women idiots, too? Yeah. I got you. Yeah. Besides all... me, obviously. <laughs> yes, it's, it's all good. So I, I think that's one of the big things that I'm... I wish it was an easier way to promote that craft beer isn't just about the beer, it's about the community. Yeah. And to kind of like get that part out there so that way people understand. And it's because it's easy for people, you know, it's easy for people who go to craft beer, craft breweries and understand, well, yeah, it's a community thing, everyone just hangs out. But for the people who don't know, or see it, and it's like, ah, I, an IPA, I don't really like IPAs, and I'm, or have the typical like, oh, everyone's just a beer snob there. Yeah. You know, I, I wish there was an easier way to kind of promote the family aspect of it. <clears throat> I think I think if we get um, so this probably is like a full circle coming back to what where I think the conversation probably initiated was if we could re- the po- the 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 poison apple in the craft beer industry was a snobbery. It was the hype beer. Yeah. It was. It took away from what craft beer really mm-hmm. was meant to be. It was supposed to be a communal hangout spot. You come together. Yeah. We're gonna have a good time with our friends. Yeah. Like it's a different vibe from a restaurant. It's not a bar. It is a hybrid of that. You get the bar experience of the you know hanging out with your yeah. boys, but you get the vibe of a restaurant. It's like the brewery was like the perfect blend of that. Yeah, yeah. What killed it? It was the lines waiting for a beer. Hype beers. Yeah, yeah. This guy has these guys have the best brewery in the you know the whole world. I'm gonna go wait in line for hours and make them a, a money pit. Yeah. Like, <laughs> listen, I'll sit down with any of these guys and debate them on that. Like, tell me you didn't kill the industry because they did. They 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 destroyed the entire part. It now became the race to get the coolest beer, the hype beer, yeah. and they were just dumping out shit. They were popping out. They were giving you the bottom of the barrel sometimes of beers, and right. people would still line up and get them. Yep. That and, that and rate it like. Oh, oh God, it's so good. Oh my <laughs> God, it's so bitter. Oh. I mean, I don't know. Number seven hundred and forty-two. I yeah. love it. Yeah. 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 Yes. So like that to me. As that started to increase, you, you it didn't become like this culture of like community. It became. Who had the bragging rights to have the coolest beer? Yeah. Who was able to check it in first? Who was able to do this? Right. Like, if the fact that if you go to sit down, and this is the saddest thing I see, you come in with your wife or your boyfriend or your husband, whatever, <clears throat> these people sit down and they just go right to their phones, they start checking in beers. Mm. And yeah. I go, Yeah, yeah, yeah. What the fuck? I get it. I mean, it's cool, it's a collector's thing, it's a kind of like a video yeah. game. Yeah, yeah. But like you don't even, yeah, yeah, you don't even acknowledge the fact they don't even take any situational awareness. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can have a gun to their head on the backside; they would have no fucking yeah. idea. And until we get out of this like mindset of, I, I think I think actually I I think we're so far in in, in orbit right now; it's going to be hard to pull us back in. Um, I know that's probably a really bad metaphor for it, but we can't get rid of untapped. No, it's not going to happen. <laughs> we need to tell, we need to bring community back together. We need to give people a reason to come to the brewery again and not make it a snobbery, a high class thing. Yeah. Like I said, n- no more fucking lines for, for for beer releases. You come to the brewery, just come to the brewery to go to the brewery. Yeah. Like I don't need to sell you stuff to go <laughs> as a cash cat, like a, 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 a line you up for like a. a a milking station, you know, a money milking station. Come to the brewery, just fucking hang out and have a good time. Sit down, enjoy it. I went to a big name brewery. You probably, I'm not going to say it, but it was a brewery that does that up in up in Massachusetts. Already you already know what I'm talking about. When I went there, I thought, oh, I'm going to take all my crew there, and I'm going to show, like, see what the, you know, we'll take them there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought the line there was to get into the building just to drink. And I didn't mind doing that. That was we a got, line. We got, <laughs> no. You couldn't even drink when you got there. I go, we drove up all this way. We can't even drink any beer. No, you got to take it and got to go. Yep. Oh, my God. Usually there's two lines. Usually well, this is something that later got – this is something later that happened. Oh, okay. 
so okay. this was in 2019, uh, 20, uh, 2019. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, that was the most disappointing thing I've ever went on. Yeah. Now, granted, I did say, I, I called over a manager. I said, hey, is there any of the owners here? Like, we're coming up. I'm not trying to, like, pull that card. We, I just brought my whole crew up here. Yeah. <laughs> like, can you at least show us the fucking building? Yeah. And they were, they were nice enough to do that. Yeah. But I was like, dude, you have this beautiful tap room. No, they just take the money and go. Take take your shit and go. Yeah. It was like a fucking hooker yeah, take, <laughs> for take, beer. Take your shit and go so I can feed my koi fish. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Aren't you glad I've never called you that type of brewery in Connecticut? Huh? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I may or may not have um, said that to someone. Said, said that, that to, to someone a brewery owner. Owner. Um, into their face. They were like that style of brewery in Connecticut yeah. and I didn't appreciate it. I come here to talk with people, get to know yeah. people and that it, ki- it kills talk. community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You go in line, you, 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 you post up in front of a brewery at fucking three o'clock in the morning to get the new beer release. What do you guys talk about? I'm fucking tired, bro. Yeah, right. Dude, look at, dude, did you see what this other brewery just made? Dude, I'm going to wait in their line tomorrow. <laughs> There's no community in yeah, that. No. Sit down with your fellow peers, sit down and have a good conversation with them. That's why we have beer, style, beer hall style tables and I don't think people even know how to use them. People like they'll go oh. in there and they don't know that just because there's a couple on this side, yeah. they won't sit across from them. Yeah. I go, no, sit there, right. sit there. That, that, yeah. Like, that's it's the whole like, point. It's like, no, come on. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you look at it and you're like, wait, there's eight seats and these two people taking up the whole fucking table. Up the whole table. No, sit no. down. Right. <laughs> sit. Sit. This is a venting. This is a good therapy this session. Good. <laughs> you're welcome. This is good. Yeah. That's like when we went to Oxbow. In um, Portland. Oh, Portland. Yeah. yeah. We walked in. The place was packed. packed. There was a show someplace next yeah. door. Yeah. And, and I'm like, was, I, there was two people, two people sitting at this pretty same, big table. Same, same kind of community table. And it was like, hey, do you mind if we sit yeah. here? No, no, no. Come on. And then we just had a whole conversation with them. It was great. Out. The best conversations I've ever had are sitting across from strangers. Yeah. I'm telling you, me and my wife, my wife's a total introvert. She knows this. I'm not making fun of her she knows this i'm an extrovert she's an introvert we've i've i've actually we were in line at a restaurant one time yeah all right and the person was like you know table for two table for two and we noticed it was a four you know four top available and they weren't going to give us a table so i literally went to the couple i go hey do you guys want to just share the table together and they're like yeah let's go for it they put us on the table yeah. we all split the check we freaking got to meet these people we played a we played a game yeah. while we hung out I don't even remember their names, but I remember the matter. experience. Exactly. Right. And it was like, it's one of those things. It's like, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If people would just be kind to one another, you know, and just take a chance on anything. Exactly. Yeah. You know, yeah. put down the phones for once and, and just. You know that yeah. The woman was a children's author. She does school visits. So yeah. I was like, that's freaking yeah. awesome. Um, and the guy has a sailboat that he does tours out of Portland uh, in the harbor. So. Yeah, it was. He's uh, like. Come on down. I'll give you like, just give you guys. Yeah, yeah, give you a tour. Yeah. Yeah, I think we need to reel back in our. I I think I think the craft beer industry needs a boom, and the boom is reeling back in the community, and and being a, a spot again. Again, I think people got afraid to talk to one another with the whole COVID thing. Mm-hmm. They got they, you know, oh, say six feet away. Yeah. We'll walk. We kind of like push each other away. We really need to bring people back in, get to know one another. Sit across from them. I I told I forced you guys to get close together. Yeah. Yeah. Am I interviewing you? (laughs) Yeah. This is actually our therapy. Yeah. Yeah, So So I think uh, we, if we can do that as a whole, as a community, I said let's not focus on the beer fest. Let's focus on doing things individually. And your breweries were meant to be community hubs. Yes. We need to get back to that, and not the rat race of who can make the coolest, hypest beer. Just make fucking great beer, and do great things at your brewery, contribute to your local community, put on events, make people excited. Yeah. Do the things that you can't do at Talk a typical more restaurant. About your events, because you do a lot of events. Yeah. So we're doing, um, <laughs> we're doing a lot of everything right now. <laughs> so we do car meets, we do comedy shows, we do vendor markets, we do live pro wrestling out in the parking lot. In the summer, all summer long, we partnered up with a local uh, uh, wrestling uh, school. It's uh, Paradise Alley Pro Wrestling. And I had uh, called them up one day and I said, hey, 
would you be interested in doing live pro wrestling at our brewery? And he was like, well, it's going to cost you X amount of dollars to come in. I said, no, no, hold on. <laughs> Here, let, come in, sit down. I think I sat him on the exact couch you're sitting in right now. <laughs> and I sat him down and we had, a, we had a conversation. I said, I won't give you the whole spiel, but I basically simplified it to this. You have a wrestling school, which, uh, you know, it's in, a, it's in a hot, sweaty warehouse. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. don't have any outdoor environment. Yeah. You can't serve alcohol. Ooh. You can't serve food. Yeah. You can't do any other things to promote yourself. Well, make to make the experience yeah. better. Yeah. And it's about making the experience collaboratively a really cool thing. Yeah. Who gets to see someone get fucking suplexed with the Pearl Harbor Bridge behind them as the sun setting, you know, while the guy's raising the bell? I don't know. Just like all these crazy yeah, things yeah, can happen. Yeah. Like I, I pictured this idea. I sat him in the window. I go. Yeah. You set up the, the the ring in the lot. I showed him pictures of like other breweries had like you know yeah. that have done this outdoors. Um, Beer Shot Lager House in Colorado had done this, so I had showed him like pictures of that, and I said we can do this here. I was like we can have this really fun thing. I was like you collect the gate, yeah. we collect the beer. We're probably both gonna make around the same amount of money at the end of the day, you know, on a per person schedule the scale, um, and we just go we take it from there. And it's been it's been a success. It's been a great success. We have extra parking, which is really cool because we have the remote lot. Yeah, so that definitely helps out. I know a lot of places don't have remote lots or extra abilities to park customers. Like if you give up your parking lot for an event, you're usually out of parking. Yeah. But we have the luxury of being in a neighborhood that doesn't really have much going on. Um, and we have a good, great landlord that we're like, hey, we're going to use your, your remote lot, you know, when we need it. And he's like, yeah, go for it. As long as you keep it clean and lock it up at the end of the night, you know? And so it's been, it's been very beneficial to have that. Um, so we have an amazing partnership uh, with uh, Paradise Out, Paradise Out Pro Wrestling. Some of the best like pro wrestling you're going to see on that, that scale. Um, nice. These guys put it, lay it on the line and they're not even getting the recognition that these WWE guys <laughs> get. Um, yeah. By the way, both former WWF uh, guys, uh, the, oh, the guys, yep, Paul Roma and uh, Mario Mancini. Amazing guys, gotten to know them. Uh, we're we've been get, gotten to know each other and uh, have what's the word I'm looking for? Building our relationship, Building our relationship over time yeah. as individuals, as uh, co-promoters for this. But the Bash at the Brewery has been a very successful program that we've been putting on. Um, we have a paranormal night market thing that we do with uh, New England Obscura. Uh, that's a, a very successful event. You get all these vendors that come on here selling oddities and all types of weird shit for <laughs> rituals uh but i love it you know like the the and the, he puts on also he has uh people come up here and put on certain performances magicians nice. and um what's the guy it's like what's the jonathan edwards guy what's the he's like Medium? mediums oh. there you go he has like things like i think you know all that he type of stuff. And I'm like, Isn't that a winery? <laughs> yeah, it's actually John Edwards, or maybe it's John. Yes, John Edwards is a winery. But I, that's a guy. That was a guy we grew up on. Well, I grew up on. Yeah. You're old yeah. as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry. No, no, I'm kidding. Oh, uh, fuck you. It's all good. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so we have that. That's another big event. And and the thing is, we don't want to have to rely on events for people to come here on a regular Saturday. But the events do help bring people to the neighborhood. And be like, oh shit, that was actually pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but we don't always want people to come here only for events. So that is a kind of like the battle we're currently facing is like, oh, there's no events going on there. So what's the point? Um, but we make it work. Yeah. We also do a lot of private events upstairs. We have the I whole. We didn't yeah. talk about this whole Queens yeah. lounge. Yeah. Can we talk about my lounge? Yeah, we have a sec. We have a secondary. <laughs> we have a secondary floor. So we have our main beer hall downstairs. Holds about uh, eighty something people. I think the capacity is something like that. Or, uh, plus the outdoor seating, which opens up another 54 seats plus, yeah. uh, plus standing. Um, so we have that that we run all throughout the summer and spring and, and into the fall. And then if you come here, you want to do a private event, we have a hole upstairs. can host uh, 125 guests typically, comfortably. Um, and so we can do that. People come up here. It's always good when we have those private events because it – Seems like the whole purpose of the place is is is, is, is together. Yeah. 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 I mean, the lounge is really. Cool. It's a different. Yeah, it's a totally different vibe. Yeah. 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 
totally different vibe and we try to we try to make it two different places i think the original idea was you come up for two different things 21 plus upstairs regular beer hall downstairs yeah. but over time we've come to realize that the you know private party pri- people want cool spots and yeah, they're like yeah, you yeah. know the private private party side of it does benefit quite a bit yeah. we're actually thinking about doing some fun projects of actually opening it up to the public as a the queen's lounge at our oh. brewery yeah so it'd be like kind of like a high-end cocktail thing yeah, but yeah, we yeah. have to wait for some things to fall in the line yeah. for that yeah that would be actually pretty cool yep anything involving the queen's lounge is going to be yeah yeah it's a beautiful spot i mean you get to see the river you get to see the bridges i mean it's just kind of we are the last manufacturing strip of property in Connecticut that's on any type of waterfront, at least, that I'm aware of. That's the last, uh, this is really it. Yeah. It's not much. Everything else has been turned into condos yeah, right. and yeah. all this stuff. There's not much more manufacturing along the water. So if we can keep it for many years longer and be successful, we'll be happy. Absolutely. Yeah. So how did you or what made you do the, uh, so you think, yeah. Uh, so you think a brew was a? Uh, it was a brainchild. Well, I should say this. Back in Chicago, when I told you I was home brewing, uh, one of the first competitions I ever entered, I won. Yeah. And uh, it was a people's cho- choice style, like competition. Um, I didn't get any like crazy r- award to brew with the brewery, but it was you went in, you taste out your beer, yeah. you got feedback, and people will just voted on it. Yeah. Which most homebrew competitions are like that. I know. Let's well, say homebrew competitions. I was, uh, oh, well, I am BJCP certified for that. Uh, very low ranking, but I went through that training and all those judging were like, you sit down, you pop a bottle, you talk to the guy in front of you, yeah, yeah, you, yeah, yeah, you, you know, yeah. I could smell the mosaic <laughs> ops, but cool. Great. Get it. Yeah. That's the setting. But I was winning those. But the ones that had the most impact on me were the ones where I actually got to talk to people. Yeah. And I got to see the smile on the faces when they were drinking the beer and whatnot. So So You Think You Can Brew was, uh, it's, you know, So You Think You Can Dance, whatnot. So You Think You Can Brew came up from the idea is like, well, I needed a name for the thing. And I thought I could brew when I was younger. So that's where the name came from. But the idea behind it was I wanted to give back that opportunity and that feeling I felt when I won that competition. Um, Cause to me, it really inspired the entire growth of Armada. Yeah. When I won that competition, I go, Oh shit, I think I can actually do this. I think I, I can sit and talk to people all day long. I can yeah. serve them beer and chat with them. Um, little did I know the path it would take me to get to that point. Right. <laughs> But uh, it, it really it was there. And so when I opened Armada, originally I wanted to do this idea back at the barracks. Um, but there's a lot of... I'll just say not everything was seen to... Uh, all the ideas were taken the right way. Like, yeah. you know, sometimes they, there was just disagreements on how things would be handled, how things would be consumed. Yeah. It's a taking away from this, it's a taking away from that. We literally shut our tap room down, downstairs, no, for, for that yeah, event. Yeah, yeah. So, like, people can't just go up and buy beer during that event. Right. Though we did have kind of a hybrid on the last one because there was a private party upstairs, which we'll never do again. But <laughs> um, on the third, yeah, on the third one, it was it was kind of a little, sh- it was a fucking clusterfuck. Yeah. But typically, yeah, we shut down the tap room for that on the second and the third one yeah. uh, per- with the purpose that it's it's about these kids for this this moment yeah um and the last one was really good i mean everyone came out for that one was on fire the fact that you guys missed it sorry but yeah, that was the yeah. toughest one yet because these guys came with heat every freaking beer that these guys okay. delivered with was great so they like said the idea was um go around my school schedule again guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, ever. The built-in idea is just giving back that feeling and uh, the or the award is to brew commercially. Yeah. So when I have them come in, I just let them I let them grain in, have them grain out, yeah. um, add the hops, talk about how we make beer in a certain process, um, talk about our water chemistry. We talk about uh, how we handle light beers compared to dark beers, how we handle lager beers compared to ales. Yeah. These are the yeast we use. We kind of just give them the crash course on like how Armada makes beer, yeah. um, which I'm not I'm not like you come in I'll. I'm an open book. Like you want to talk to me about it. 
uh, don't ask me when I'm running the bar, but you know, if we were actually sitting down and having a conversation, I'll talk to you um, about that type of stuff, especially if you're someone inspired, uh, inspire or aspiring individual trying to like make your way up in the industry or trying to become a brewer or open your own place. I'm more than happy to tell you like, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Sound like me when I uh, ask about the auto industry. Yeah, no. Yeah, don't, yeah. Do it, <laughs> don't do it. Yeah, well, it's it's it's, it's a like, passion project. Right. People say, you know, Lisa, why don't you guys open your own brewery? Why don't you guys? I, I want to continue to enjoy yeah. beer, and I enjoy it more when you make it. Yeah. And I enjoy <laughs> it more when someone else makes yeah. it. No, no, no you, you you can't lie. You had fun Saturday. I did have fun Saturday. But I would still much rather, all I did was add some, like, that's not my beer. That's not us making beer. We assisted we, in we beer making. No, no, we, we made You guys assist. There is a difference between. You dumped the first bucket of grain. Correct. Yes. But there is, an, there is a difference between a collaboration right. and helping. Yeah. And actually owning, coming up with the recipes continually. Yeah. And having to supply, we're not paying for that. Like that was a guest option. Like we yeah. we were invited very there, yeah, very true. It, and I would do it a hundred times again. But the difference as long as is, you're the feature, you, you're not gonna <laughs> you're not the act. You're the feature. <laughs> it did sketch. smell amazing. It did smell amazing. And I mm. want to smell that daily. <laughs> but what I'm saying is that. To do it on a daily basis, when that is your entire job, I, I feel like it would take something away from beer for me. That's all I'm saying. It's possible. So, I mean, I can agree with that. I went, when I went to automotive school, I went to automotive because I was like obsessed with cars. I loved cars. I wanted, you know, Fast and Furious was yeah. huge in my or childhood. You know, how old are you? I'm 87. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, but born. Sorry, no, uh, no. Sorry, I was born in eighty seven. Oh, okay. It came out more. Right. Right. I'm, I'm thirty. Yeah, I want to say eighty seven. No, Damn, no. Yeah. thirty. You, I'm, I'm thirty. Thirty seven. I thought because yeah, I hated Mark like yeah. Benjamin Buttons. Like, yeah. How old is Mark? Seven hundred and forty two. Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> um, yeah, like I was in automotive. And I loved it. Like I loved cars, and then I went. I started get you know passion got a degree or I'm sorry going to school I actually dropped out yeah. I lost interest with like the the repetitious like I wanted to I wanted to go to automotive to fucking build really cool fast cars and granted yeah. I probably could have followed that journey yeah but I didn't like the path I was currently taking because I was actually backtracking my time like I had spent four years in high school in automotive class I already knew yeah. all the basics yeah. I already knew how to do, you know, I knew what top to center was. I knew this, I knew that, but what, you know, I don't know. I'm just throwing things out there for any car geeks. I knew how to do a lot of things. We're all correct. Yeah. <laughs> D do so much. Yeah. And then when I went to freaking, I paid to go to this college I go to this college and they're like, no, it was a uh, uh, Porter and Chester. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So I actually went to uh, uh, Southern for a couple of years, yeah. dropped out, realized I didn't want to go to. I didn't want to go to school. I was forced into high, I was forced into college because it was a thing you were told to do. You need to go to college. You need to get a degree. Blah blah blah. I was like, so I didn't know what I wanted to go for. So I went for two years, just general stuff. Yeah. Uh, my credits didn't transfer. <laughs> Throw back on that one. Yeah. Uh, which which Parker and Cheatham did you go to? Uh, Porter and Chester. Yeah. Yeah. I went to Stratford. Okay. Um, so uh, I went. Chicopee. Chicopee. I went there, and I sit. I sit in there. I think I went for maybe like the first like six months. And I looked at my buddy, Mike, I go, dude, this is torturous. We're dealing with people who are like NPCs yeah, yeah, that yeah. literally are, have no, clue. have no fucking clue. They've yeah. never turned a wrench in their life yeah, yeah, yeah. and they're sitting there and they're just holding up the class. And I had said to the teacher, I go, when do we actually get hands on stuff? Yeah. Because like, this is awful. Like, and, and you have to go, I have to go to this every night. I even asked, I was like, can I test ahead? Can I like. Can't take it besides sitting here. Can I <laughs> test and come back in like six months? Yeah. He's like, no, you need to show up every class. I was like, I, I and then at this time I was working at, uh, I was, I had already worked at Audi. I was a porter over there and I was working at uh, Acura doing a little bit of oil changes and all types of stuff there. 
And um, I basically, uh, I had a buddy that I knew, Joey, who was moving to Chicago. And he goes, hey, dude, do you mind, like, would you ever be able to, like, like uh, can you help me pack? Help him pack. <laughs> and uh, he left his car behind. He's like, I got to figure out something to do with the car. I was like, I was like look at my buddy. He's like, dude, we'll drive it down. We'll drive it yeah. to you. We'll go, we'll go to Chicago. We'll drive yeah. it. You know, blah, blah, blah. So we coordinated a day, drove out to Chicago, which is in, after, right after Christmas. And uh, had an amazing time out there. Yeah. Like, I was like, this is freaking cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I actually purposely missed our flight home twice i think yeah something like that uh the super bowl was actually going on it was yeah. giants um they ended up winning partied hard actually i was supposed to fly out the monday after super bowl but i got so fucked up and i think there was a snowstorm or something yeah. that i just said fuck it we're just i'll take the next flight out yeah. i had to call my job at Acura, and i was like yeah I'm, I'm stuck here when i got back they reprimanded me because i didn't make it back for my regular schedule I was like fuck you i was like fuck you guys i was like i was Legitimately, I was stuck out there. Yeah. I could not get a flight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But though I my my will to like want to get the next flight home wasn't so prioritized, you know. It, it wasn't there. Was it executive? Yeah. Had to be executive. It was Milford. Milford Acker. Oh, okay. I was about yeah. to say that sounded like a Yeah. Thing. So they re like they reprimanded me for that. I was like, fuck that, you know. Yeah. I, and I, I just kept thinking, I was like, man, Chicago was such a great time. It's like I think I want to move out there. And then I uh, I think I came to the decision literally within like 72 hours of that meeting with the boss, I said, I'm done. I went to school. I said, I'm, dro I'm dropping out. I was like, this is not benefiting me. I want to pave my own path. I'm going to, I'm moving away. Yeah. And, uh, it's like, you know, you don't get your tuition back. I was like, I don't give a fuck. I had nine more months of this. I was like, it's awful. And I just packed up my shit and left. I sold my, uh, my mom, I ended up having my mom sell my car. I listed it, but yeah, I just packed up, took Joey's car and moved in the car. Well, this has been this has been a good time. Thank you, thank you. We, I uh, loved hearing your way story. Way overdue. Yes, really weird. Never overdue. heard all of that in like one sitting. Yeah, I think I told. I think I the. I feel like I told the story a gajillion times, but that um, I feel like I definitely opened up sides of it that I didn't. Sometimes you have to think back on your past, and you're like, man, what were the pivotal moments that really defining. made the yeah, defining yeah. moments that like really made things. And I think I opened up a lot of sides that I might not have talked about in previous podcasts, you know, the whole brew bound thing, not being able to afford it, all types of stuff. But yeah. There's a lot. There was yeah. a lot. And I yeah. we greatly appreciate, appreciate the story. Yeah. Thank you. you it's, sharing a, that uh, with it's a story that I think a lot of people will appreciate. Grassroots bootstraps. Yeah. Doing your thing. Cause you grinded. To yeah. get with it. We're still grinding, man. The grind yeah. doesn't stop. Yeah. You know, rise and grind every day. Well, now that I'm 3.4 miles away. <laughs> <laughs> Sales are going to increase. Yeah. <laughs> Just saying. I love it. Count on me for 20. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, hell thank, yeah. thank you, Johnny. We appreciate you taking the time to sit down with us. Thank you for coming on here. Oh, yeah. 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 Appreciate you guys and keep doing what you're doing. It's uh, You guys are a, a, a good group. Uh, it's always a pleasure to see you guys. The energy you bring every time you come out uh, is always positive. Uh, people like being around you, and I love being around you. So let's do this again sometime. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Man. yeah appreciate, appreciate it. Appreciate the love, man. Do you have a possible date for, like, month for the next, so you think you can It's October. It's October. October? Yeah, it's already posted. Oh, okay. uh, well, the registration's not there, but the, 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 uh, the date's already posted. Okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll be there. We'll be there this time. We're not planning nothing. Yeah, we're not planning nothing in October. Nothing. Yep. Nothing. So we'll have that nothing, one. Nothing, Lisa. Dude, before you know it, October's going to be here tomorrow. Yeah, I yeah. swear to right. you. Yes, it yes. literally flies by. We're going to be tired of October for years. Yeah. Gonna be, nah, October's going to be a crazy month because we have so much going on. We have another you know, paranormal night market. We have the homebrew competition. We have a, like two, three weddings that month. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. it's fun. So I, so I actually... I got to talk to my wife. We might need to, every, we may, might need to update the date on that. Or even push it, we'll figure it out. Yeah. But everything happens for a reason, right? Right. Exactly. Follow right. that path. Yep. Keep going with it. Yeah. That's right. Pave your own fucking path. <laughs> That's right. Well, thank you very much, sir, for sitting down with us. And uh, as always, drink responsibly, stay wobbly. We're going to catch you on the next one. Deuces. Cheers.